Just give me one second. The live stream has to start. No, I'm trying to get this live stream off where it's going to start echoing every time you speak. Right? It's not cool down in here, by the way. It's like 81 degrees in here. Oh my God. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. I was, I was pumping heat into the room. Yeah, Lou, the. Uh, the uh, uh, the controls are by the the rear door to the uh, regatta, behind yeah, that can... first desk. That's uh, uh... we solved that mystery. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good evening, and welcome to the Village of Mariner Quarter Trustees work session for April twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. And may I please have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. All right, the next item on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Um, I, I move that we take, um, because I see that um, Chair Gelber is here, that we take flood mitigation out of order. I think that's- um, Yeah, I know you always do that as, as, as and, a habit, I always do that. And then also um, the video conferencing to D, because that's gonna be timely, that we take those out of order. And that I know there was um, some emails back and forth. The flood mitigation committee meeting committee sent us um, a motion to discuss, and I think we should discuss that too. When we, with while we have Tony online. All right, let's let's. We, we all we also oh. we also should have. I'm sorry. I think we also should be, uh, move the dam up uh, and the um, uh, the open meetings law because we have a timeline on that. 60 days from the 8th to make a decision one, and move forward one way or another. So with those changes, I so move. Second. Oh. Trustee Young? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Trustee Young, yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Trustee Tafor? He's not here yet. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Oh, okay. I'll say honest. <laughs> um, okay, let, let's go to 1K. Uh, Mr. Gelbus here. Hey, Tony, how are you? Hey, good evening, uh, Mayor, Board of Trustees. Um, I see Darren Sarnoff there and uh, I'm not sure who else? Mark. So, hi everybody. Hi Sally. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, okay. So, I had three points tonight. One was I wanted to say thank you. Um, you know, our residents and community wanted the rivers cleaned up. Looks like that's moving ahead. So, thank you very much. Second was Florence Park, uh, uh, Bea B, uh, Hank and B, uh, Sarasoli had an email to the FMAC and they were upset and concerned about their sanitary and their stormwater. So I met with them at one point and walked around and um, it seems like they had had a study done in the 80s and it seems like they still have a lot of at least stormwater problems. So again, first of all, I, I met with Hank again and he thanked the village because I guess our village manager sent out a couple of staff members to start opening up manholes or person holes. I'm not sure what they're called nowadays. And uh, it looks like they need some clean out. So we discussed this at MAC, FMAC and, I, and we support that we either include this in this, this study of the, uh, the west part of the village where we're gonna look at the surface waters. So maybe use that engineer or another engineer planner to 
look into what's going on in the uh, Florence Park area. Um, the other thing the, the FMAC w would like is if we can find the, uh, the list, I guess there was a list of, of a person holes of storm and sanitary um, in the village to see if, if, the, the, uh, if these uh, person holes in this area are on that list, because as I walked around, at least some of them looked like they hadn't been cleaned in a while. Now, maybe we just need to increase the frequency. So the request from FMAC is that we um, study this area um, to see what we can do to reduce sanitary problems in stormwater. And just as an instance, in pretty much in front of Hank and B's house, there's a uh, like a little depression in the street. And, you know, they, they showed me the fire hydrant where, you know, they get probably 18 inches of water there fairly regularly. So that's our request. So that was my second point. Um, <clears throat> does anybody want to ask me anything about that or I should keep going? Keep going. Okay. So um, I'm on a roll. <laughs> All right, so then my third point was at the moratorium. Um, the, we had been asked to review it, which we did, and I guess we're still reviewing it. So we didn't really come to any uh, consensus on whether we should have a moratorium, we shouldn't have it. Uh, I think that the one thing that we th believe is that if there is a moratorium, it needs to have a purpose, and we thought maybe the purpose could be to uh, figure out what regulations should and shouldn't be changed, and maybe have a time frame for that review. So that that was that's to the extent that which we uh, came to a conclusion on the, the the moratorium. So those are the three points I wanted to make. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Dan. Do you do you can you give us an update maybe on the Florence Park uh, approach? I know you met with them and you've had people out there. Um, well, I, I wasn't able to attend. Uh, the uh, meeting that Jerry had uh, with Mr. Sarasole was uh, indisposed. But as far as the sanitary sewers, uh, the part of the history of that is back around, uh, I think it was 2005, 2006, Westchester County uh, paid for a study along uh, you know, the Frank Wagner, Florence Park area uh, and uh, areas in Orienta where we had uh, illicit connections, I and I. Uh, the village remediated the work that was identified in that report uh, back around, I think, 2009, 2010, 2011. That was an I&I &I report. Yeah, it was an I&I report. Um, the reason I know is because the county released the village from the requirements because I think it, had the village not uh, performed the work, they would have uh, gone after us to pay for the this, this study that was prepared by an engineering firm, uh, Savin and Associates. So that work was taken care of. And uh, obviously we're still looking at that area of the village as part of the second phase of the INI uh, study that uh, we've had Arcanus doing for us. So uh, they will identify additional uh, sewer remedial actions that we need to take care of in that area. And that's part of the, uh, the second phase of the work. So on the sewer side, I think we are, on the sanitary sewer side, I think we have satisfied a lot of the um, items that were presented to the village by Mr. Sarasoli, Sarasoli from that study from the 80s. And again, there were studies in the 90s and the 2000s. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Yep. Okay, you guys wanted to talk about the memo to uh, FEMAC sent? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I actually watched the meeting and I know you're having another meeting tomorrow night. Correct. Right? Your regular meeting. I guess you had an extra meeting last week. Oh, we had an interim meeting. And you're going to talk about the moratorium again, I think, tomorrow night. We're going to try to talk. We have a very long agenda list. But yes, we're going to yeah. try to talk about the regulations and how we process the uh, the review of properties, of applications in the floodplain, and further discussion on the moratorium, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Just, just, just so you know, that the, my... my... My proposal in the moratorium is not about the regulations. It's a specific proposal. I would appreciate it if they would keep it to the specific proposal. All right, so Mayor, um, I guess I'm, uh, uh, do we, okay, I will, is, is, is your specific proposal uh, written? And I'm, I'm not yes. busting your chops, I'm just asking. 
I, I, yeah, how'd you have a discussion about it without reading it? it, it it's, it's on our agenda tonight. It, it, it's on it's on for the regular meeting. It, it's a, a proposal to limit development in the, in the C1 and C2 districts of all properties in the flood zone. I, I find, I, 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 Dan Natchez, how could you have them have sit there and have them have a discussion? Not tell them what the issue was. Well, Tom, what the issue was. Tom, we, we, had, we, we, they had lots of questions and they undertook a lot of discussion about different aspects of it. Yeah, Tom, we basically, I tried to back it all up a little bit to say, okay, what, what were the health and safety kind of ideas to start there on? Right, but but, but the, the, the proposal is for a specific recommendation. All right, we, we will look at, wanna, we will. Wanna, let me finish, please. If you want to okay. talk about regulations, that, that's all fine. But that wasn't what was before you. And I, I'll send you a copy of, of what's proposed. And th that was the question. All right. So we, we will narrow the focus tomorrow night. Just so you know, the, the Tom, your proposal came out of their the um, flood committee's com proposal that there should be a moratorium in the flood uh, for building the floodplain. No, Dan, and, didn't. Just let me, I, I'm talking, thank you. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I, I'm not wrong. Go check the tapes, Tom. Check and take a look at it. Uh, Tom, out of courtesy. Dan, I'm Dan. I, don't I, don't when, don't inter person, just don't interrupt. When a person is saying no. where my recommendation comes from, I am not allowed to tell you where it came from, sir. And it didn't. You can, you you have plenty of opportunities, and you but you interrupt people. It is not the, the appropriate approach. Uh, okay, keep going. Dan. Thank you. So, they, um, months ago, the flood committee made a recommendation for a moratorium in the floodplain. Subsequent to that, you made a uh, proposal. To study infield to study infield housing in the C one and C two in the floodplain. So um, they went through that. They also went through a lot uh, a lot of other aspects to it, uh, and um, had did not reach a um, conclusion uh, for a recommendation on your specific uh, proposal. There was controversy and different concerns by different people. Okay. I, I'm just talking with the chair of a uh, of the committee, and he wasn't aware of what my proposal was, which makes me feel like they didn't know what my proposal was. That that's a, that's that's not an assumption that I, I pulled out of nowhere. And Tom, not honestly, that might have been my mistake. I mean, I you know I. I okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you to it. You know, I, I think right. that the flood mitigation committee and many residents have one idea of what the moratorium should be. And you had proposed a, like a, a more discreet moratorium. And I think that might be where the confusion lies. It, 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 it might be, but we have to deal with what was proposed by a board member in front of the board. Right. I'm just saying, I watched the meeting and I think that might have been part of the Thanks. I, I, the yeah, meeting. Go ahead, look. I, I would, do you have the bandwidth to attend the meeting bar? I, I'm not sure yet, I have stuff going on. I think that would, that would, that might go a long way to prevent this from drifting again. Um, in any event, the, um, the, the flood mitigation committee sent us um, a resolution about how we're gonna, how, they're proposing that we handle the Army Corps plan. And um, I'm just gonna read it. It says the, the, the Village of Ameranek Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee hereby requests that the Board of Trustees appoint Trustee Natchez and Chairman Gelber as liaisons for the village, the board and the committee with the Army Corps of Engineers. And I think that conversation really echoed what happened um, in 2017 and prior when I was on the flood committee and Tony and Andrew Spatz and Peggy Jackson and Dan Sarnoff were um, instrumental in getting the Army Corps plan kind of through the local boards and through the process in Washington. And I think that there's a lot of validity to their recommendation. There are a lot of people who are 
were on the flood mitigation committee in you know 14, 15, 16, and 17 who are still who are on it again as people have cycled back on. So I thought that that I thought that that was a very um, I thought that it was a very good um, recommendation, and I think you know in part because um, Tony's really familiar with the plan and the workings, and is a project manager by by trade. Um, and Dan is um, you know somebody who actually works with the Army Corps on a regular basis. So, um, and it's clear that the Army Corps staff know him and respect him. So it seems like that would be a, you know a good recommendation. And um, I thank them for thinking about that. Okay, I, I, I think we should I, adopt that. I appreciate their input, but this is about the inner workings of the village government and the board of trustees. Uh, the people who we have a plan. This isn't getting a plan through the boards and, and commissions. There was a plan that was approved, and the Army Corps of Engineers is going to implement that plan. The liaisons for this plan are going to be the chief executive officer of this village, uh, Jerry Barbario. We have never had a liaison to an outside governmental entity. It has always been the chief executive officer of the village. That is the, the government that we are, have set up on here. And we're not gonna you know, start appointing trustees to be in charge of a huge plan, a part-time trustee and a, and a uh, you know, volunteer board member who I appreciate everything he does, but this is not their role. This is not the role of elected officials in any community. And it would be foolhardy. And I'm sorry to say that you know, it, it seems like it's coming out now because of electoral politics. And that is said, this plan should never be kicked around for political benefit. It really shouldn't. It's too important to this community. This is all one shot. There should not be a trustee who is dealing with the Army Corps. I don't deal with the Army Corps. The village manager deals with the Army Corps. If we want to change the kind of government we have, that's one thing. But this is an, and I, and I don't blame the, the flood committee for making the proposal because they don't know the inner workings of the government, but we should. This is not how our form of government works. Well, it never will be. I, Tom, I, 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 I don't know that Jerry has the expertise to do this. I think Jerry would certainly be involved with it, but I think this is a very big project. It's unprecedented in the village. And I think we should be using, really using all the resources we have. Um, and in fact, the Army Corps plan isn't a, isn't a finalized plan. They are looking for information. They are looking for more information from the village and they're looking to tweak the plan to improve it. I think that we would be foolish to not use all of the resources we have to make sure that the Army Corps has and, as much information as they can possibly have. So, and there, is I, nothing, I, and there is nothing to say we shouldn't use the resources we have, but who's going to be involved in a direct leading of this is not one trustee who was well, running in no, an election this year. That's not happening. You know what, Tom? And, I, and also, Nora, the power to appoint a liaison rests with the mayor, and this isn't going to happen. Tom, the power to appoint a liaison rests with the mayor in terms of boards and committees. No, and Nora, 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 that's, Nora. What the, that's what the law says. No, and we, I, we, we have an opinion on this. We have an and, opinion from our village attorney about boards and commissions. It came up in December when we were doing our board appointments. Yes. And you're saying but now I, it, 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 can it's can an I exception for outside Tom, agencies? I'm speaking. Yes, I'm speaking, Tom. I'd like to be able to finish my statement. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Go ahead. The, um, and in fact, it's while that, that is actually, we've learned, we learned in December that it was the law, that it's the mayor's appointment for appointing people to the, the board liaisons to boards and commissions. The reality is we've never done it that way. It's no. always been the board of trustees, as long as I've been watching this village, which is you know more than 20 years, and as long as I've been an elected official, it's been a collaborative part, a, a decision amongst the five members of the board of trustees about who the liaisons would be. So it, and it was done at the annual organization meeting by the entire board. So maybe it's been, maybe that process was done incorrectly, but I believe- I, I, have, I, have, been on this board, I have been on this board much longer. That law that Bob has cited 
is about boards and commissions. I don't think anybody ever anticipated um, appointing liaisons or having people working with outside agencies. So there I, should I, not be a there, there, will, there should not be a trustee working with the Naomi Corp. This is ridiculous. He's well, one member of the board of trustees. He's not the mayor. The mayor isn't doing it. It should be the chief executive officer. That is not how we operate. It isn't, and it never has been. You're talking about precedent. Show me one precedent where a trustee was liaison to an outside entity on a, on a project that's $88 million. This Show is, me one other project like that. We don't have one. This whole thing any is project, Any project, think, Nora. Any project. I, any project. Tom, show this me another project. Listen, this Dan, is, Natchez, Dan Natchez is the trustee to the, to the flood committee. He can interact with them, make recommendations to the whole board, and the whole board will decide what to do. One person is not going to do it. Well, Tom, I'm person. sorry that I'm sorry. Uh, I, you know, I think that I think everybody there there needs to be an agreement to disagree because I okay. think more heads are better than one, and I think that we should be using all of the expertise we have to make sure that this is the best plan for the entire village. And I think we will do that. And I think that this is stinks of electoral politics. And I'm sorry, you cannot tell me it doesn't. Well, that's that's how you see it. That's not that how I think that's how everybody will see it. It's, it's that's your transparent to me. That's your opinion. OK, yeah. well, you obviously don't have the votes to do it. So next on the agenda. <clears throat> Agen um, trustees and mayor, am I free to Yes. Go, go to my next assignment. Thank yes. you, Tony. Thank All right, you, Tony. Have a good night, Tony. Tony. Have care. a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Uh, okay. What did you want to do next? I think, well, either the dam or the... Um... Let, let, let's, let's do, let's do the... Uh, we'll get to the dam next. Let's do... Open meetings resolution, law. We have resolution selecting the green option uh, from uh, community choice aggregation. Well, just a minute. We met, we just amended the uh, the agenda and the order. Uh, um, so we so, so, bang this one out there. We'll get. I promise you, we're going to get to all yours next. I, next. I Does anybody have a problem with this? We got it today. No. No, I mean, it's. I'm sorry okay. the rate might go up, but I don't know much, what else we can do about it. And okay. I think then, what ha and just just to reiterate, we should explain what it is. Okay, it, it is adding this to the agenda, and the item is uh, when we last approved the committee choice aggregation, uh, they had one top rate option. Uh, since the price of natural gas has gone up, uh, the the rate that they were going to charge has also gone up. They're, they're putting a ceiling on it. If it goes up past a certain amount, uh, they will not do it. Right. But this is what we, this has to be done by next week. So it had to be added in post haste if we were going to participate. So we are a participating community. So I see that there are three people who want to add it to tonight's agenda. So let's just get yeah. that out of the way and we can move on to and the day. I think we just need to say that everybody who everybody in the in the village will have the option of opting out of this again. Yes. You always have the option of opting right. out. It's a short. It, this is a shorter term one instead of doing it for the long length of the typical length of time they're doing it on a shorter cycle. This go round. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Let's go to the dam. What number is that? Oh, it's um, M, M is in Mary. Yeah, so okay, well, we're going to item 1M. Okay, just I'll give everybody a brief recap. The West Tester Joint Waterworks owns a dam which is just north of the West Chester Joint Waterworks. This dam was built to build a reservoir, it was built in 1930. Uh, and at, I assume that where the residents of the village of Mamarna grew their water from for a long, long time. Uh, in the 70s, the Westchester Joint Waterworks started procuring its water from the New York City uh, water system. The dam and the reservoir were no
no longer needed. So the Westchester Joint Waterworks was going to, from what I understand, remove the dam. The village said, no, don't remove the dam. We believe it provides some flood protection. So the Westchester Joint Waterworks says, okay, if you want to keep the dam, then we're going to come into an agreement with you where you maintain the dam. Uh, the village signed that agreement, I think, in 1977 or 1978, uh, when a lot of us uh, were still young. And uh, consequently, over the decades, uh, since the dam, they, they also put in two sluice gates at the time, mm -hmm. which allowed the water to flow through and allowed the river to operate more like a functioning river. So now time's gone on and I think over the decades, it wasn't maintained properly. And the county, not the county, I'm sorry, the state has cited us for not maintaining it properly. Uh, there is discussion about whether we need it anymore for flood mitigation, does it help? Does it hurt? Uh, one of the things I do want to point out here is that people often talk about dredging the reservoir, but it really needs to be pointed out that there is no longer a reservoir. Uh, that, that is gone. It is now a functioning river. So reservoir might have been there in the 70s, and it hasn't been there since. And I know a lot of uh, folks with a long historical uh, background in the community still refer to it as a reservoir, but it isn't, and it hasn't been for decades. So I just want to clear up that nomenclature before we move forward. Uh, I'm going to throw this over to Dan Sono to talk more about where we are with uh, the maintenance program for the dam. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, uh, Jerry met earlier today with uh, consultant we've worked with in the past to uh, develop our uh, EAP program or that's emergency action plan uh, for the dam. Uh, you know the um, uh, we already have uh, an inspection and maintenance plan in place, and we're going to be submitting uh, an update to the. Uh, EAP, the Emergency Action Plan, providing our 2022 annual certification uh, in the uh, in the next few months. Uh, you know, regarding the assessment, uh, that's yet to be determined uh, because uh, you know we may, and that's a pretty uh, broad term, may be able to reclassify uh, the dam uh, from its current. Uh, class C high hazard to either a class B or a class A. Um, as, as a point of reference, uh, a class C high hazard dam, that ha that's the same rating that the uh, Kensico Dam is. Um, the Mamaroneck Dam is holding back, I gotta imagine, less than 1% of the amount of water that the uh, the Kensico Reservoir Dam is. Um, you know, we've done, um, as part of the emergency action plan, uh, what are called the uh, rainy day and sunny day inundations. Uh, rainy day inundation is, you know, what happens when the dam is overtopped during a flood event. And unfortunately, we're, we're accustomed to that and we see what the results are. Uh, the sunny day uh, uh, inundation is uh, what would happen if there was a failure in the dam during your normal uh, day when it's nice and sunny out, there's no rain event. Uh, the, from what I recall of the emergency action plan, it's actually a minimal impact uh, if there was a sunny day inundation, if there was a, a failure in the dam. Um, you know, I did, you know, I know that uh, uh, in terms of what, how to proceed, Again, there are a couple of options. There's the you know, restoration or the decommissioning. Um, you know, I, I I don't know what level of support there would be for just decommissioning. So I think we're looking at the uh, you know refurbishment and restoration of the dam. Uh, you know, the in multiple 
engineering reports over the last uh, 40-ish years, 45 years. Um, the first, which was produced by Reef Hazen and Sawyer back in 1977 or 78 when I was uh, three or four years old. Uh, the reports have all found that the it provides mitigation for a two to five year storm. Uh, anything over that, that's when the dam is over top and it's, uh, it's not providing any sort of uh, mitigation. Uh, but uh, you know, the cost back when, I think it was approximately the same cost for decommissioning versus you know, refurbishment slash repair slash you know, bring it up to spec. So that's kind of the, uh, the, the $2 or the two minute uh, uh, update on, on where we stand with the dam. And, you know, the question, if you have any questions, I can try. Yeah, and, and where are we with, 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 what's the plan for action? Uh, right now, we're updating the emergency action plan. Uh, we're updating the maintenance plan, and we're going to conduct the engineering assessment uh, over the next few months to uh, hear the uh, the notice from the state DEC. I'll get to you, Trustee Natchez, in one second. I just want to say that Save the Sound, uh, contacted me and Jerry, and they're talking about uh, a study to you know, about returning the river to its natural state, and they want to talk to the board, uh, and I told them to come uh, in two weeks to talk to the board. Go ahead, Dan Natchez. Uh, Dan, when you say we, I assume you're talking about the village? Uh, I believe I, 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 that's what I referred to, but is, what do you okay. mean? So, uh, are you what, talking about what, the, uh, uh, the village and the Westchester Drive Waterworks, or when I say well, we have to refer to the village? Okay. So, as I understand it, and the mayor has confirmed that the uh, dam is owned by Westchester Joint Waterworks. That's correct, but we have the maintenance. The, the, the maintenance agreement, uh, excuse me, the requirement for the emergency plan is required by the DEC regulations by, from the owner of the dam. We have a, the village in 77, and the mayor is correct in this, entered into an, a maintenance agreement. But the maintenance agreement is very, very specific about five items. Um, it has to do with uh, a 24 inch culvert, a pipe, uh, cleaning of the screens, um, uh, and, uh, secure, and making sure the access way uh, to, the, to the inner dam. Um, it does not cover anything else beyond that. I talked today with Susie Oppenheimer, who's the only person who was on the board at that time, and probably the only person around here uh, who knows the history of it. Uh, you know, and it was very clear in my discussion with her today, it had nothing to do with uh, taking over the dam. So now the question is, uh, you know, there's no question that something needs to be done. But the question is, why is this falling upon the village taxpayers to shoulder the whole burden of this? And why is this not um, the being done by Westchester Joint Waterworks as opposed to the village? And the village obviously has a share that has to be done. It obviously needs to do the maintenance, which is the, per the agreement. Um, but what you're talking about uh, and the reports talk about millions of dollars, uh, regardless of what option one takes. So that's, you know, I'm trying to get a better understanding as to why uh, we're not following that path. And I, I suggest then that we have the village attorney review the agreement from 1977 and come up with specifically uh, what they believe we are responsible before, for and what the scope of work is that's required to bring it up to speed. The scope of work, to. I'm sorry, go ahead, Nora. No, sorry. I think we have to. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've, I read the agreement and um, it's, it's really those 24 inch pipes and screens that, you know, and, and we've clearly been lax in not maintaining them. Um, and it looks like the waterworks has been lax in not complying with some inspections. So there's, you know, there's, there's lots to do, but I, but 
it doesn't seem like the 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 entire responsibility for maintaining the entire dam as the village is is just some specific aspect. So I really, before we go too far, I absolutely think our village attorney needs to be looking at this. Uh, and, you know, okay, uh, the, the matter that uh, I would like to see cleared up first is whether or not the dam actually does impact flooding, because if it does, then uh, then it certainly is, is part of the, uh, the, the storm flood mitigation emergency action plan. I would, uh, I would think that we could um, uh, tell the village manager to continue with this action plan, evaluate whether or not the, the, the dam does have an effect, if it does, then uh, then we need to uh, proceed from that point. Well, you know, I think we have a lot that we have to do, but if we don't have the authority to fix the dam, then we don't have the authority to tell the waterworks to do it. Okay. So I think I think we I think that they're parallel tracks. We need to work with the waterworks to find or or, or with the Army Corps to find out whether or not this dam can provide flood mitigation can provide more than it does but we also really have to know who's who owns the dam because it's not a matter of just you know who's responsible to pay for something if we don't own the dam we can't repair something it's not as if i could you know build an addition on my neighbor's house let, 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 then let's do what i originally proposed have the village manager's office review the contract from 77 attorney the, the village attorney's office reviewed a contract from 77 and compare that with what the scope of work is and you know see where we land on this except and i understand that i am delighted to have a the village attorney you know review it but it's very clear what i'm concerned about is a couple of things uh, the first is that if we the, the action plan, the emergency action plan is required by law to be by the owner. So if we are doing the action plan, um, we are in effect potentially causing us to take over the dam. And we don't want it, we don't want to overstep what we, you know, or assume a liability that is not ours to assume and that I don't think we can assume. That's, that's why I want the village attorney to tell us I, what's wrong. Um, what's wrong just not. for once, let somebody finish. Well, just, just keep chewing, chewing the same cut. I get what you're saying. So, you know, Lou's, Lou's suggestion of, you know, uh, if it's an emergency uh, because of the emergency for the other, then you didn't need another emergency. One of the things that has scared a lot of people uh, in the path of uh, the upper portion of the Romanic River is when, when it was announced, the way it was announced, that they were concerned that they had to evacuate their homes. Um, you know, and we've, I've assured numerous people that that's not the issue at the moment. Uh, and we don't know that uh, to be a fact. Uh, the studies that have been done are all very interesting and very helpful, but it, they do not take it, go into the real cause and effects as to how it will help or how it would hurt depending on what actions you take. Uh, and that's part, of, that's part of the big issue and that's not gonna be resolved uh, quickly. That's one of the things uh, when I proposed and uh, uh, trustee to four uh, joined in that you know the dam had to be addressed was not just to do uh, fix the maintenance aspect of it um, that we are committed to by the agreement, but to understand better what the real, the long-term cause and effect issues are of either rebuilding it, building it higher, building it lower, or taking it out. We don't have that information. Is there something specific that's not in the 77 study? the Army Corps look at it from uh, several years ago, the Stearns and Wheeler studies, or the um, uh, Leonard Jackson and Associates studies, that specific piece of information you're looking for? Dan, can, can, can we please have everything that's been written? I think it's partially mentioned in the- uh, Yeah, I, 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 I included I, extracts with the agenda. Yeah. So everything that's been written by the Army Corps and by uh, our engineers. Um, we look at that. Close, more closely in the yeah. next two weeks. Yeah, absolutely. 
and also Mark, please review with uh, Bob the agreement. We'll be both. And, and, and see where we are with that. Yep. And that's in the backup. Yeah, I'm sure Mark has it. Yeah, yeah. We, we have it. Yes, Louis. Is there, is there... Louis, Louis recognized then you. I'll, I'll say this though, as far as the dam and, and responsibility for it, if it doesn't help the flood situation, we don't want to, we don't want responsibility for it. If it does, we do want responsibility for it so we can protect the people who live below it. And we haven't taken care of that up to this point. So we need to figure that out. And if it does protect people uh, uh, from, from flooding of any kind, we need to jump in and take the responsibility for our citizens. Well, th th there's no doubt that we haven't, you know, if going back decades, done what we were supposed to do. I mean, just because we can, we can push it off on someone else, we shouldn't. People still flood. No, I agree, I agree totally that we don't. Do. That we want to make sure that if there does have a flood implication, that it is done right and done quickly and done meaningfully. I'm low, you know, again, it would be nice. Uh, oh, you were talking to me, I was talking back to you. So we were having a conversation, but go ahead, finish. Thank you. In the backup that was just posted, do we have the any agreement with the Westchester uh, uh, County because back in 77, the resolution said they were assuming 50% of the cost. And I haven't seen anything on that. They, they, I believe the resolution said they were doing 50% of the cost for what needed to be done at that time. I understand that, but I've seen no documentation except in the resolution of the village, which is one-sided. I'm asking Dan if we have any backup to the, that covers that. I, I'd have to look for it. Okay, I think that's important to have so we have a better historical perspective on the thing. Uh, may I, may I yeah, go ahead. Okay, the thing I'm saying is that this feels like, if, correct me if I'm wrong, it feels like the pattern of talking stuff yeah. to death and then nothing happens and then there's another flood. That's all I'm saying. We go, whatever we got to do, we got to do something. We got to figure out if that thing helps flooding or not, and then get right on it. We need an answer in two weeks. We need an answer well, in two weeks. This, this, this can't I, languish. I'm not sure we're going to get an answer in two weeks about the flooding issue because there's a lot of different engineers and a lot of different engineering studies. So I think that's, that's a pretty they, heavy. They lift. all seem to say the same thing. Well, yeah, but they they all seem to say you know they they're they're not very specific. Okay, so we'll put it off some more and wait for the next flood. No, no, Lou, that's not what I'm saying. But I, I think it's going to be easier to get an answer about who owns and what the responsibilities are, because it's a simple agreement from 1977. When you look at the engineering studies, they don't actually all say the same thing. And they don't actually give solutions as to what would happen if the dam were decommissioned. So... I think there's I think that there's information we don't have and while it's sad that with all of these warnings the waterworks in the village didn't heed didn't heed them and didn't try to solve the problem there is some engineering and science involved and I'm not I think it's I, I, while it would be great to get an answer in 2 weeks I think we might not be realistic in being able to get an answer in 2 weeks and I don't want to raise you know, just as just as I, I think it's shameful that people were alarmed by this emergency declaration. I don't want to say we're going to have a solution to the problem in two weeks. We are going to be closer to the solution, and we're going to work consistently towards a solution. The, the, wait up! Wait up! Wait up! Wait up! Wait up! I, I don't agree with that. In two weeks, we could have an answer to the legal question. That mm -hmm. that's easy. Yeah. And. In that legal answer, there will be things that we are definitely responsible for, and we should do the things we are definitely responsible for post haste. Mm -hmm. We should not wait an indeterminate period of time to get engineering studies that we, we've already have, but need to be reviewed further, I, I guess, is, is the point. We should do what we have a responsibility to do right away. What I want from the village attorney is, what is our immediate responsibility and let's get cracking on it. 
because you know if, if we're going to ask people to clean up their side of the street you better darn well have your side of the street cleaned up i agree so so can we maybe come up with a with a resolution expressing some urgency on this matter telling them we want we want answers within a certain timeline and that we want to get this done because I think what alarms people, Miranda, and I appreciate that the, the emergency declaration didn't take people by surprise, but what alarms them is living in an area that floods every 15 minutes and, and people blame the dam. It may be that that blame may be misplaced, but we need to find out what that dam does and fix it if it does help. That's all and, I'm saying. And I agree. And whether the whether the village owns the dam or excuse me, whether the village, well, it doesn't own the dam, that we know regardless of what the responsibilities are, but I think the, the agreement is very clear with the very specific points that, had, that the agreement covers. Uh, and that's limited. But that doesn't mean that the village's responsibility of trying to move the Westchester Joint Waterworks for, faster and further on this uh, and help in whatever way we can to uh, mitigate flooding that's not trying to be delayed under any circumstances by anybody on this board. Uh, let's be very clear about that. But the question is to make sure that in the path forward that it's done correctly uh, and uh, that we are part of uh, making sure that the, that the resolutions for um, fixing it one way or the other are in the best interest of our residents to help prevent flood in the future. <clears throat> Can, uh, can we make a motion at this at a work session? We certainly can, right? Well, yeah, I, I, I really, I mean, I think there's a consensus here. Well, just say what you want to say. I say I, I, I would like to see us in, pass a resolution that that endorses the um, the uh, manager's actions and instructs him that this is a matter of urgency and we want answers uh, on a timeline. That we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to study this step. We're not just. Uh, um, you know, we're not just watching, we're not observing what happens, we're actually uh, uh, trying to direct the course of this. But I, th I think the manager has, has issued an emergency declaration as is, is right. And, you know, I, I, I think we should just say, you know, do what we're contractually required to do post haste and support him in that. I so move. I mean, I think there's a consensus on it, isn't there, gang? Yeah, I think, I mean, we we have to figure this out. Yeah, so, you know, he, he should do what we're contractually obligated to do right now. You know, it, 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 as soon as, and I, and I, although I, 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 I hear that Trustee Natchez says it's very clear, I'd like the lawyers to say what, to look at it and tell us what we're contractually obligated on. And not, not you know, not to I take trustees words for it. And I think we have to, you know, also, you know, work closely with the with the waterworks. You know, Mark, could you could you, yes, and we will. And Mark, can you get us that post haste, not wait two weeks? Yep. By, by the next uh, agenda. Appreciate it. No, not the next agenda. Next week. By next week, yes. Yeah. So we, one we of the things I would like what I'd like to do is ask staff uh, to contact Westchester Joint Waterworks, or Tom is the chairman of the Westchester Joint Waterworks, instruct their attorneys to also go through this uh, and to begin whatever post haste, whatever actions they need to be undertaking. You, you don't have to do that. I have a meeting tomorrow and I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. What's the next item we decide to do on the agenda? The open meeting. The, ever, the open meetings law, which is uh, two, D, 2D. 2D and not 2D. Yeah. Video conferencing and open meetings law. Okay, just let me give a, a brief explanation to the folks at home. The ability to have meetings like we're having now expires on the 8th of June. The legislature of New York State has changed uh, the law about video conferencing, about people participating from remote locations, whether board of trustees members or anyone who's participating uh, and giving testimony, I, I would guess. So what they're requiring is that each municipality 
And I don't know why they're doing this. It seems absurd that each municipality has to pass a law to regulate how they do their video conferencing procedure. Uh, there's back back up here, uh, and, and and there are some basic uh, what you can and can't do. So I, unless I read this wrong, and Mark, have you had a chance to go over this? Yes. So I, I think that what they're saying is, you know, there are some exemptions that they are allowing to video conferencing, and you have to kind of opt in on those exemptions. Is that correct? Uh, to, to a certain degree. Um, I, I can go over. So basically, it's part WW of Chapter 6 of the Laws of 22. Um, changes the meeting requirements. So it, you're correct. As you said, essentially, the, the status quo remains the same until June 8th. Um, and after that, uh, if the board would like to continue video, video conferencing, teleconferencing, um, after that, the door does have to pass a local law. Um, and um, so I'll, I'll go over the requirements for that. Uh, so hey, can I just read one paragraph? Which I, I sure. Of course. Uh, if you go to with Nikon, page two, uh, section three, members of the public body must be physically present at one of the meeting locations at which the public can attend in person, unless the member is un unable to be physically present due to extraordinary circumstances as set forth in the public body's adopted meeting procedures, which include disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, or any other significant or unexpected factors or event which may preclude the member's physical attendance at such meetings. Members of the public body do not have to have, do not have a right to attend meetings remotely, but may participate remotely via video conference only at the discretion of the public body. So they're really, you know, I think it's funny because in some ways they're real exact, right? Disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities. And then they say, or other significant and unexpected factor, which is kind of vague. Mm -hmm. That, that's that's correct. That. That's I'm correct. Sorry, I interrupted you. I just want to get that out. No, no, that, that that that's right, and I think that's part of why uh, I'm not sure what the exact intention was, but that's part of why the um, the local law requires whatever local law is passed by a municipality that wants to 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 have uh, the ability to conduct uh, meetings remotely has to have some sort of written procedures. And my my hunch is that that is why it's there because they didn't want to limit it to just those specific extraordinary circumstances. But if the board, you know, whatever board or county or whatever municipality would like to expand that or um, I guess less than that, they, they can do so. So um, nonetheless, even, even if that's the case, there still has to be a quorum of the members of that public body physically present either at one location that the public can go to and access or at multiple locations as, as, as we have read the law. Which so, is also Mark, question for you. Yes. Does that mean that uh, if somebody is traveling on business or otherwise, that could not be uh, um, in the law that they could, that a, um, <clears throat> that a member of the committee or commission or whatever, um, you know, can can zoom in because presently we can do that uh, under the previous law. Um, so the question is: Is that possible to be built in? That's question one. Question two is: Do we have a? As I understand it, we have a sixty-day time limit from uh, April eighth to enact a law, one way or the other. Is that correct? Uh, so I'll answer the first question uh, first. So that the board has the ability to determine those written procedures and to determine what the parameters is as to, or those, those extraordinary circumstances. The written procedures have to otherwise um, be consistent with the, the section. So there are other certain requirements that you know, can't, be, can't be changed, but it would be up to the board to determine what those extraordinary circumstances would be and whether they would fall in line with those examples that as they set forth there. Because that, that's the, the examples that the, uh, the mayor had mentioned 
those are um, the way we read that it's including but not limited to that. So whatever the board lays out, uh, if, if it chooses to do so, to lay out the written procedures may, you know, may expand upon those circumstances that um, they can be, uh, that, that, a, that a member can uh, participate remotely. And then for the, the second question as to, uh, the law doesn't have to be passed by June 8th. That being said, um, once June 8th uh, comes around, um, the board wouldn't be able to conduct meetings as it has been now. So if the board would like to have the ability to conduct open meetings, it essentially it just goes back to the status quo of, of previous, the previous open meetings law prior to the executive orders and to the various, and to the local laws enacted this year. But, you know, after that, you know, it essentially goes back to that. But if the board would like to have the ability to conduct open meetings, excuse me, to conduct meetings um, via, tele, via video conference, then it would have to pass a local law. Yes. Go ahead, Dan. So, Dan what I, so the, the real question is, do we want to allow video conferencing in some, some form going forward or not? That's really what this boils down to. And I know from the discussion that uh, for many of the co committee members of all the different committees, uh, that a lot of people would are, find it much easier and allows more participation uh, to be able to have video conferencing going forward in some form. So I think that's something that we, at least from my vantage point, I think would make it easier and more desirable. It doesn't require, it doesn't mean that we have, that somebody can, you know, that, are, that people have to video conference, but it gives them the opportunity. You have to have a quorum present. Uh, there are certain, you know, certain things in what the state passed that we have to incorporate. But I think that we should be able to do that and allow people to um, participate, whether they be board members uh, or commission members or members of the public to video conference in uh, for those exceed those extreme things that have been cited, as well as uh, for, you know, family needs, uh, business needs, you know, types of things. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I'd like to hear what everybody else wants to do. I, I, I well, there has to be a, a majority at the meeting, right? We all know that. Yeah. And as it works now, if you're not at the meeting, you have to say where you are. And, uh, you know, before, I'm not talking about the emergency restrictions, I'm talking about the old rules. You have to say where you are and uh, allow people to the opportunity to attend. Uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, just keep in mind, we're the only community around here that's doing this. You know, the town of Marinick's back in person. The village of Largemont's been in person since June of last year. So, you know, we're, we're, we've been pushing this pretty much to the limit here. Uh, I mean, I, I know that there's still trepidation about COVID, but COVID might be around for the rest of our lives. Can I... I, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure. Because I've been trying to, this, I, you know, I think this is a pretty confusing memo. Um, yeah. I think that um, one, you know, that there, one requirement may be, and this is one of the things I can't figure out, and maybe Mark has thought about this or puzzled it out. Um, you know, I, I, if we go back, if we don't do anything, then we go back to if somebody needs to, to zoom in, they have to give their location, right? And they have to do it as part of the public meeting notice. I can't figure out whether, for instance, you know, we set up a meeting at Village Hall, there's gonna be three or four people there, there's supposed to be five people there, but one person can't come because they're quarantining. You know, do they have to have it in the notice three days ahead, or can you change your mind at the last minute? Because it seems to me, I mean, I can't tell you how many people I know who are quarantining this week. I'm happy I'm not one of them. Just by luck, I'm not one of them. But I wouldn't have been able to come to the meeting tonight, but that's okay, because I could have just called in. I could have Skyped in, because we're still under that kind of dispensation. So the question is, how far in advance do you have to notice that you're going to not be be attending if you're attending under these new rules that we um, that we set up? And B, 
Um, it looks like we have to have a little bit more, which I think is what the county does, a little bit more robust technical ability for people to um, teleconference in for the public to teleconference in, not for not for board members or, or committee members, but for the um, for the public to come in. So we have to have you know like ADA compliance with those kinds of technic with those kinds of technologies, and that's what the county does. So those are those are two questions I have. It seems to me that you know if we have a spate of meetings where people can't come because somebody is sick because they're quarantining. It'd be beneficial for us to allow them to Skype in because they may feel fine. They just have to stay out of the public forum. I, I, don't, I, I thought that we didn't have to quarantine anymore. If you were exposed to somebody, you didn't have to quarantine if you had uh, vaccinations. That, that's what I thought the CDC was doing. You know, that may be the guidance. The reality is everybody that I know that has COVID is, is, vaccinated boosted and often double boosted okay but uh, i'm just saying that's not what you know right but we, 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 okay we're gonna be doing so tom, this okay we're gonna be doing i, I did not get exposed to covid because i didn't do something last week if i had been exposed to covid would you rather sit next to me or would you rather me stay away from you i'm just it's just like a personal preference so i, I think that we should okay, think Nora, about the all fact I'm saying all i'm saying is that is not going to be the case forever I understand it's not going to be the case forever, but it, you know we're having a little bit of a surge now. By June, we may be the governor may be changing the executive order back to virtual meetings. I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of like who's on first. We don't quite know what's going on, so I think there's a benefit to us in figuring out how to how to how to have the ability to teleconference. I know I'm not saying we shouldn't, but I'm I'm just talking about you know I, I was just talking, you know wanted to point out that you don't have to. Uh, you, if you want to, that's fine. If you want to, you know, quarantine, but I'm just saying it's not the law anymore. So maybe it's just better look in terms of just having a medical issue. I know uh, <clears throat> uh, several years ago, there was an incident in another community where there was a trustee who uh, uh, was going through chemotherapy and uh, was participating remotely. His address was advertised as that's where he was participating from and people showed up to his house and he Left the meeting because uh, he he couldn't be sub he couldn't be around people because mm -hmm. he was immunocompromised. I mean, uh, but I think you also have a little bit of and maybe Mark you can clarify. I think there's a little bit of flexibility in determining what those extraordinary circumstances are. Is that correct? Yes. Um, however, however, as we read as as I read the law and as we read the law, um, one of the important requirements is that the village has to have written procedures yeah. as to this. So it, it, you know, that those written procedures, as I see it, don't necessarily have to be part of that local law being passed, but there has to be reference to those procedures and they have to be laid out somewhere. So, you know, it, however the village would like to define uh, those extraordinary circumstances would be up to that individual municipality. Um, and, you know, they can define it as, as they would like to. Lou, how do you feel about this? I think we should uh, construct a policy that isn't focused on COVID because that's looking back. Other things are going to happen. There's going to be other viruses. There's going to be other uh, reasons why people can't attend. There's going to be a, a whole universe of things. And we should uh, deal with um, a standard procedure, I think, that that allows uh, at least the elected officials to re re be remote if their reason and location are disclosed uh, for the public. You know, I mean, the, the reason, you know, somebody could Skype in from prison. I don't know, you know. <laughs> you, you know, so we, we, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole universe of things that haven't, um, that don't apply to COVID. Uh, we're still thinking about COVID, but, but the next thing will be different. So we need to be prepared to deal with the next thing. So that's that's what I would hope that we would get off of the, the, the COVID thing. Yeah, I, I, how about you? I, I think if you're gonna, I'll run a meeting then. But I, I think if you're gonna do it and you're gonna Skype in, the public should know why you're not there. It, it, it shouldn't just be uh, I'm not showing up today, because the job is to show up, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and if you know, there's always going to be a time when people can't, and I understand that. But you know, it, it should be expressed why. And you know, I, I had to go to uh, you know California on business, and I couldn't get out of it. But I'm here, and my attention is on the village of America for these five hours, whatever it is. Uh, so I, I think that that is important to me that you know people know why you're not there, and uh, you know what. what and you know, I, I don't know if we need to give people access to where you are. I always thought that was absurd. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't. And now it's listen to what Mr. Sarnoff just said. You know, the fact that somebody goes banging on your door, and, uh, and you know, <laughs> and in this village that would happen. And it, yeah, no, obviously it did. <laughs> Nora, you got your hand so, up. Yeah, I just want to say um, to lose to one of Lou's comments. I'm working on a prison project right now, and I'm pretty sure you couldn't Skype into a meeting from prison. Oh, good. Um, but that's, that's yeah, that's I'm pretty sure. But um, th so that, but Tom, that's exactly my question. That do are, do these extraordinary circumstances require people to give notice of where they are or not? That seems to be that's like a gray area to me. And if that's the case. Does the notice have to be um, 72 hours in advance? Does it have to be on the meeting notice? Because for instance, I got ex I thought I was exposed to COVID in August and that's when we were meeting in person. So I couldn't go to a meeting, but I couldn't, I didn't have, it was, you know, I got like, I, I had, a, you know, like one day. So there wasn't time for me to change the notice, right? The, the village couldn't change the notice. and because we were operating under the open meetings law, I had to let people come to my house. And obviously I was, nobody was supposed to be coming to my house. So I don't understand, this seems very vague to me. Do our, the, the procedures that we adopt allow for um, a change of notice that day so that if somebody has an extenuating circumstance and they cannot physically come to a meeting but they could do the meeting from home they're able to do that, or does it have to be um, properly noticed ahead of time, which is what the open meetings law requires now, absent the executive I, order? The, I don't see anything in the open in, in this law about the seventy-two hours. Uh, well, so what I, get, what, I, what I want to get to is listen. If 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 you know you're going to be in Atlanta, you say I'm going to be in Atlanta. I'm going to be skyping in from Atlanta. If you get exposed to somebody who has COVID on Sunday night, we'll have an, a medical emergency exception. Yeah, as long as you can say what it is. Say what it is. Where I, you are. I, I've been exposed so, to a contagious disease and I can't come. But, but I'm, my, I'm at home. My question is are, can you make a last, under the open meetings law now, you can't make a last minute change? Right, but you have to, it has to be part of the notice. And that's, I don't understand, I don't see. That you can make a last minute. It, it doesn't it doesn't speak to whether or not you can make a last minute decision for an extenuating <laughs> circumstance. And maybe Mark, this, hey, Mark just, have you just, looked at that? Just, so, if, just just to clarify, so um, the, I mean, the board would have to decide in advance whether the meeting would be um, would be by video conference. So the three, you know, a quorum would still have to be present at a physical location or at, you know, no, no staff even as to those physical locations. So it's, it is a little bit difficult because, you know, you have to give the notice that the meeting will be by video conference ahead of time. Um, it doesn't, from what I have read, it does not say that a specific, uh, in this case, board member would have to say that they will be, you know, they will be, um, attending uh, electronically prior to that meeting. So it, it does make it a little bit difficult um, in that sense. The, the, the requirement as to, uh, as to who would have been attending electronically would be in the minutes after the fact. So it, it is a little bit, uh, it does create a challenge as to you know, when the board would wanna make the determination to hold a meeting by, uh, by video Victor, conference. Has, yeah. Victor, go ahead. I was gonna just add to that point that probably to clarify, let's start with the minimum requirements that the state has set up. Because if you build from that, those are kind of the, the minimum essential elements of a video conference. And 
That includes, Mark, please clarifying these situations because probably that's where uh, it's, it's more impractical. Let's put it that way that, for example, the, the, you may need to relocate or to move or you don't know exactly where you're going to be. Let's say if you're in work travel uh, within those 72 hours, but that may be gone with this new law that you can now, uh, you're not stuck with that, with, with that requirement. Before we had this problem that between the time you, you have the notice and the time you have the meeting, if you're in a different place, then I think you could join, but maybe you couldn't vote or there was some, some problems. Now we are offered the opportunity to clarify. And for various reasons, that is, that is, you know, the, the new, the new, uh, well, the, the, the trend or, or the requirements of, of, of this new era, uh, regardless of, of the reason. So I, I do think we should move forward in drafting a law and, and the necessary procedures uh, to move ahead uh, coming, coming June. No, what we said. But starting, starting with the minimum, and then we can, we can have a further discussions of what, what the board would add in addition to. Louis, my, my question for Mark, Mark was that, are we talking about a, a, a meeting that is by video conference, or are we talking about a physical meeting in which one uh, participant conferences in? In other words, it's like we're all, we're all at a dais, and at the end of the, at the, end of the, uh, the dais, there's a, there's a screen where, uh, where uh, uh, Dan or Victor or, 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 or uh, Nora are. Um, it, it, that seems like it's a different, that those are two different animals. Right. So, um, so again, the, the quorum has to be there at, at one physical location or sure. at multiple physical locations, you know, and notice as to where that those physical locations are. So once that's, uh, once that's settled, so part G says the public body shall provide that each meeting conducted using video content shall be recorded. Uh, excuse me, that wasn't section one. So section eight says, if video conferencing is used to conduct the meeting, the public body shall provide the opportunity for members of the public to view such meeting via video and to participate in proceedings via video teleconference in real time where public comment or participation is authorized and shall ensure that video conferencing authorizes the same public participation or testimony as in-person participation or testimony. So you're talking uh, about a meeting where, where one window would have all of us sitting at a, at a regular meeting and then the other window would have somebody who's somewhere else or maybe a smaller window or something like that. Not, not, quite, not quite, not quite, Lou. I, I think it's what you're saying, maybe and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, that you would have a screen that would show those who are present and those who are um, participating in video, not only the you know members of that particular body, but the members of the public who wish to. So you could have a situation where, yeah. uh, which is five people, all five people are present, you know, you know, but you're allowing the members of the public not only to come to the board meeting physically, but also participate via Zoom. Yes. Yeah. And, and, what and, we... what, and what I'd like to suggest is that we ask Mark to, you know, uh, to draft a uh, an outline of a law that uh, gives the most flexibility to the village and, it, and its participants um, and is, is as simple as possible and not as com convoluted <laughs> as it could be. Yeah, that, 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 that's the most nebulous instruction I ever heard. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we should iron out what we want to do here. I mean, uh, I, I, how, it, how it always worked was, I mean, a trustee, oh God, Potok, you know, really started videoing in a lot. So we'd all be on dais. A trustee Potok would be on a big screen uh, on the side there. I'm sure Victor remembers that. Uh, and so we could do that, have the person who's video conferencing in, if one of us is video conferencing in, on the big screen, and then do like we're doing here tonight, have the attendees on the other side, we call them up as they raise their hand. So that, that that's that's not a problem. But you know, the, the certain things that I think is important is if you know if you're not there, letting the public know why you're not there because yeah. you're supposed to be there. Yeah, no. that seems reasonable. I mean, the job is here. Uh, you know, and and Tom, it's not just about the board of trustees. It's about you know every board and commission, and the public participation component. I think it's going to be a little challenging. I know that that um, 
Augie has been working hard to try and get um, better screens and you know more information. And so it's not an issue of like a consultant Skyping in or somebody Skyping in or Zooming in to do a presentation. It's how you figure out how the board members, how, how a non, non quorum portion of the board members can participate remotely and how the public can participate remotely with all in full compliance of the ADA. So I wish NICOM had done a draft law as opposed to this confusing memo. And just Mark, uh, do you have one thing to add, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark, go ahead. What, what, one thing to add is that the, the local law either has to authorize the use of video conferencing uh, for the board and its committees or subcommittees, or you can specify that each committee or subcommittee can make its own determination. Which, which I think is fair because, uh, I mean, you know, is, is, does the uh, Arts Council need to have, you know, you know what I mean? Well, the thing is, the Arts Council still has to comply with the open meetings law. So if they make their own determination, then they can they figure it out. Adopt, do they have to get a, a, adopt a resolution? I mean, they have to comply. No, it, it, it's, it's the village adopting a resolution that enables them. They don't have to adopt their own resolution. Yeah, they don't have to. They, they can go one from column A, two from column B after we adopt our resolution. Our resolution binds them. I think, no, I, I think we keep it sim that. simple and then add to it if we need to. I mean, uh, um, you know, just start with something simple and then amend it as we see issues arise. I mean, that would so, be the easiest way to do it. I mean, uh, I'm anxious to get back to regular meetings. It's, it's a, the local government must adopt a local law or an individual public body must adopt a resolution authorizing the use of video conferencing for itself and its committees and subcommittees or specifying that each subcommittee may make its own determination. But I still think we have to figure out the logistics and whether we can do it. Yeah. And that I think it's a little. I think it's harder than what we're doing now. So the, just just to add, so in in the uh, in terms of drafting the local law, it's it, it's what would be challenge is that you know the local law could be drafted, and then I, as I read it, technically the written procedures don't necessarily have to exist yet, as long as they they will exist. But I, I think to be safe, I think the written procedure, it would probably be best to clarify the written procedures first prior to adopting the local law. So it's, it's there's no ambiguity. I agree. Yeah. So, Mr. I don't want to put pressure on anyone, but uh, so the, the board meeting schedule is you have the two meetings in May. Your first meeting in June is June 13th, uh, which is after uh, the, uh, uh, the governor's executive order expires. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but, but I, I, we, we don't have to pass it in 60 days. I mean, I'd like to pass it in 60 days, but it's not like the marijuana law where if, if you don't pass it by a certain time. That, that's correct. You just, you just wouldn't be able to conduct meetings as you have been now after that period. You would just go back to essentially the regular uh, meetings at, uh, at the courthouse. I think we, I mean, I think we're all in agreement that we need to figure out something. And I think maybe the village attorneys and the staff who are going to have to figure out the technical part of it. Should have done this yet. I mean, it's only a couple weeks. So no, I don't think anybody's done it. So I think what we should do is ask the uh, our council to uh, work with staff and draft something up for us to review uh, at our next at our next meeting. Uh, and get it to us well in advance, not just in you know the night, a couple nights before, but as quickly as possible, so that we you know can really thrash it out at the meeting and you know give direction and. Well, we what, what are we asking? I, mean, I think I think we need to give them a little more direction now. I mean, we just told them to trash it out, but we didn't. You know what? Let's give them an outline of what we want in it. What yeah, we don't yeah, want. I'd, I'd like to see the. Uh, what are we going to have the poor guy do? A minimalist beginning. Where we're going to go back to regular meetings and and, and give uh, uh, trustees a way to uh, uh, to um, comp with to a remote in and uh, and a procedure for um, for uh, dealing with uh, um, people attendees who are not there. But to, to just those two things to start with, and then we can uh, go from there. Well, I think that probably the, the big the 
the most open area would be the the definition of extraordinary circumstances, I think. And so in that sense, right. that would be something that, that the board would um I mean, would, I, would be I'm sure determining in terms of I don't care what the re reasons are as long as the public knows what they are and where the where, where the where the elected official is. I mean it can be any reason, you know. I mean it's, it's subject to interpretation. I'm not I don't want to get into somebody's uh well, well, private life. There's the ones that are mentioned there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they all are good for me, right? The ones that are actually mentioned in yeah. paragraph 13, three, I'm sorry. And then, you know, I mean, as, as Nora pointed out, you know, uh, a medical emergency uh, or, or quarantine. But, but there, there you have medical, you have job related, you have family related issues that come up. And those, those are the types of things that I would think would make sense to have as your exceptions to uh, allow that to go forward. Say that again. Yeah, medical, medical, what? I didn't hear you. I said medical. Yeah. Job related, family related. And we might want to think also, if I may. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, is there a time duration? In other words, if this goes on for uh, X amount of time, that uh, that it, it becomes a, a debilitating situation where perhaps full participation is not uh, possible anymore. You can't you, that you can't you, you you can't do that with an elected official. You could you could you could do that of a of a board member who misses three meetings like like from that other law we have. But elected officials are elected, and you can't they like literally they can stop showing up, and they're still elected officials. They, they can get arrested. Stack they could be in prison. prison and not be able to to zoom. <laughs> Prisoners get those phones in there one way or the other. Yeah, they're really Always nice. Think phones. about how. <laughs> All right. Uh, is, is that good direction? Oh, I'm just yeah, that, 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 that's fine. That's, then, uh, does anybody have anything they want to add or detract? The only thing I'd add is that because the 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 public participation component is more robust, yeah. and so that's really something that you know, Augie's going to have to weigh in on about how that how that's going to work out. It'd have to sorry, be, Augie. I'm sorry, it'd have, to, it'd have to be also allow the technology, whatever technology is used, it'd have to permit access that's uh, compliant with uh, the ADA as amended yes. for, which, which I, I, I would have to look more into because I'm, I'm just not immediately familiar with, so. I don't understand that. I mean, if we're allowing somebody to, I don't know, zoom in, how do we, how is that ADA? I mean, isn't that the, the, the quintessential ADA? You know, they don't have to come to the location? Well, well they're, they're, I mean, they're, I know that there's certain access, uh, I, I don't know specifically, so I have to look into it, is what I'm saying is, but I know there are certain access issues even even for for um, for computer access. Like there's certain types of programs that are available to be used by those with certain types of disabilities or not. So I'm, I'm just not, you know, it's just not my area of expertise with the ADA, whether that would include, you know, um, uh, access for the blind, you know, those types of issues. So we'd have to look into that as well. Includes like closed captioning possibly. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, right, exactly. Yeah. So I Can think that would be a limiting factor. Yeah, if someone- Closed uh, captions in the Zoom, yes, I believe so. Really? I gotta yeah, look into them. I don't wanna see it, but I, I, believe, I believe. The code site is there. It's in, it's right, at, it's right it's in the paragraph after so, item nine on page two. Great, but it I'm sorry, Nora, say that again? The code site is in the paragraph on page two, right after item nine. Public body broadcast. The ADA code. Because you must use technology that permits members of the public with disabilities to access the video ooh, in a consistent mm -hmm. manner with the 1990 American, oh, that, that, that is a wrinkle. And it's a wrinkle. It's a wrinkle. Yeah, because we don't have to do that with the emergency orders. No. Yeah. And I mean, it's you know, it's it's a laudable goal, but we have to make it sure is, it's, it's difficult to achieve. I think I think I want to see you know, also, technology. Also, when you close caption, it's not only the language on the bottom. You have to give somebody who's sound. Like I mean, it, we're we're ahead of the yeah. game because we do LMC TV. That's really yeah. a big. Yeah, I think LMC has a closed captioning, so to speak. Right? Yeah. All you just pointed out that you know it, it might require us to have somebody doing sign language. I maybe I don't know. I, I have to do more research because I, I just frankly I'm just not familiar with the ADA and ADA's requirements in terms of that. And, and could let me ask you this: Could we avoid this by just saying you know what? It's in person. Watch it on TV or don't. Uh, come down or don't. 
we're done. Can we do that? I mean, to the extent that um, June 8th comes around, uh, if, if no law is passed, then the, the remaining sections of the, um, the open, open meetings law still stand. So, you know, the board could decide not to adopt, um, to not adopt the local law and just go back essentially to the status quo uh, in, you know, 2019 of, or February of 2019, whatever it was right before COVID. Then, then, then folks can watch it on TV. And if they want to come down to make a comment, they can come down and make a comment, right? That's correct. Right. And if a, and if a, I mean, if, if a I mean, the simplest board, thing to do. And if a board member wants to is traveling or can't be at a meeting, they have to give the notice of their location and make their location available to the public. Or um, or, or they just missed the meeting. Yeah, well, well yeah, I, I, I think they should let the public know where they are, but I, I don't think that they need to, you know, and if somebody's home and and, and they're sick or they God forbid. They, they have cancer and they can't be around other people. We shouldn't allow other people to come into their homes. I no, 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 I, no, no. I always thought that was ridiculous. But if that's the case, then we have to adopt a law. If we want to make that choice, yeah. we have to adopt a law. Because I, I always thought that that was just awful. No, I, th I think we've given, even though it's somewhat convoluted, uh, some good direction to Mark uh, that, uh, you know, the, to to start to craft something so that we can have something more tangible to uh, focus on. Can, can you come up with something, Mark? We'll work on it. Just just to be clear, there's the local law that will be, you know, we'll make it as simple as possible. But then there's the separate written procedures, which, you know, I, I mean, I can work with uh, Vic Dan and Jerry to that extent to that have to be posted online, have to be made clear on the board on the uh, on the website. So those, those are two separate things. So so I mean, I will we'll, we'll I can work on both, um, but you know the, um, the local law can be fairly simple. It says, I think that the written procedures aspect will be the the more the more difficult aspect of it. And, and I understand, need and we need to we need to clarify whether we need to have uh, sign language. Yeah, or or other requirements of the ADA that I uh, that I'd yeah. have to look into because there there's, I know there's other. I just just from my personal experience, I know that there's certain uh, accessibility options for computer programs, and I, I just don't know if that's something that's required in the ADA. I can work with, you know, I can check with our Quite employment attorneys here to, to see about that. But what has a LMC done in the past when when you used to have the meetings over at the uh, the courthouse, uh, the courtroom, and they they, they broadcast it? Did, did they do all that? No, there, there was no ADA, you know, they, they just broadcast like a regular TV show, right? Yeah, this yeah. Is a new requirement. This oh, is OK. All right. This is a new requirement. There, there wasn't this, a requirement. There, there isn't any requirement before this no. to broadcast your meetings. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the law. You didn't have to do it. We did it, and we did it more than any other community. Yeah. Uh, so and just this this is a minor aspect, but the if if the board decides to adopt it, and the um, it's, I'm, I'm just not familiar with LMC TV how long their links last, but according to this law, it have to a link would have to be provided for five years. So I'm not sure how, how far back LMC would go, but um, after this, it would have to be available for five years. Okay. Well, the village could store that, right? We could put it right, on. Right. I, just, I just don't know what LMC's current, you know, how long uh, LMC's current archive goes back to, so. I think it's five years. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I think. They, I think they, have, they have everything, but you have to make a special yeah. request to get it. So it, it's it isn't like that. years ago where they put everything on VHS. Yeah. Because they, they, you can have, uh, they actually offered me all my old shows on VHS. Oh, great. I said, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I want to lull my life away with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, the time I watching how I age. <laughs> every, everything's stored digitally. And once it's stored digitally, they should be able to create, put it on some sort of uh, media pretty quickly, whether it be a, Flash drive or a burn image to a DVD. It's we store we store the, uh, the land use board meetings digitally ourselves, don't we? That's very good. Uh, well, we have we have the recordings with Zoom. That's what I mean. No, but I mean even before that, oh. when we were televising HCZMC yes, and Mayor, we have discs yeah, uh, with all the land yeah. use board meetings. No, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm sure. we do. I'm not familiar with LMC's technology. No, Sally just said we do. Yeah, no. 
Yeah, they would give us a disk of all the meetings yeah, right. and I have those. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm sure they're saving everything to a hard drive and then just creating the media. Right, but I'm just saying we don't have to rely upon LMC TV. Oh. Okay. All right, what was the next one that you wanted to handle on the agenda? The Army Corps of Engineers update. Okay, you know what? Uh, we haven't heard back from them. Uh, they were supposed to answer uh, the question from FEMAC. Uh, I was told that they will before the FEMAC, before May 18th. Uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers was originally going to wait to have a public hearing until they were 60% uh, complete with the design phase. Uh, through the good offices of Senator Schumer, uh, they have agreed to Hasten that pace, and they are going to come to listen to the village room. And first of all, explain to the community what is in the Army Corps of Engineers plan, uh, and what can and can't happen, and what are the parameters, and then hear the community's concerns about various issues. Uh, as far as I know, that in some substance is where we are today. Uh, I don't know if uh, Jerry or Dan have more information on it. Yeah, I mean, uh, not, nothing about the answers to the question, but um, uh, Jerry did ask me to report during manager's comments uh, that several uh, staff members are working on the May 18th meeting uh, with the public at the M1 Theater. We are preparing for a large crowd and uh, Hope to and plan to simulcast in the Sp in Spanish language as well. Yes, I I can say that uh, I want to thank the Emmeline Theater for making uh, the theater available to us. Uh, I was you know I called them up and asked them if they could you know be flexible with us and they were flexible with us and I appreciate that. Uh, at the flood mitigation advisory committee the other day, when I stopped by, I, I suggested that they. Uh, contact Robin Ingenito and the village manager about getting information out to the public and asking the public for their input. And I know Robin Ingenito uh, was working on that this week and uh, he was gonna work with Mr. Gelbar, who was uh, one of our guests before. And uh, I know that uh, they are reaching out to the Hispanic community uh, so that we can you know, get information from folks uh, who you know, or don't have English as a uh, first language and have an opportunity to uh, have their feelings heard and their concerns uh, addressed. Uh, they appointed uh, Ms. Elsa Puerto Rubin, uh, who is, I think, the only, uh, the only Spanish speaker on the flood committee. Uh, and, you know, when you look at the flood committee, I think, you know, when we next appoint somebody, it definitely has to be somebody from Washington Bill. That's a glaring uh, omission there. Uh, so that, further, I'm sorry. That, I think, is where we are right now. If, you know, I, I don't have myself any more information. Uh, I hope that uh, the Army Corps will get back to us post haste with uh, answers to the queries that was presented by the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. Uh, I just want to <coughs> tell the public that you know, you're going to have an opportunity on the 18th. Uh, when we are there on the 18th, you know, I know that everyone is very anxious, uh, is very raw from what has happened, not only through Ida, but through generations of flooding. But let's remember that these folks are there to help us, that we have the ball on the one yard line. So we have to be cognizant of not letting the perfect uh, be the enemy of the very good. And we are almost there. And this is but a foundation that we will build upon. There are a lot of other ideas. There are a lot of other speculations about things that can and maybe will or will not work. And some probably going to have validity and some will have less validity. And I, I personally don't have the ability to souse that out. Uh, but we will have engineers souse that out. We have uh, in our budget, which we'll be approving tonight with the help of God, uh, 
position for a village engineer and an assistant village engineer. And I'm very grateful that the board decided to do that because you really can't have a community that deals with flooding in such a dangerous way without having professional engineers on staff. So hopefully that uh, addition to the village staff will allow us to uh, decide more quickly if ideas uh, have worth and merit and then to move expeditiously to spend money outside of the Army Corps of Engineers to implement those ideas if they work. So I think from my point of view, I think we have to look at where we were on August 31st, 2021. We had a flood plan, an Army Corps of Engineers plan that was dead in the water, not to use a pun, but uh, it, it was dead in the water. Uh, we had the floods on the night of the first and the second. Soon after, uh, we, we had every elected official uh, up to the president of the United States, excluding the president of the United States, but everybody below him here, uh, saying that they would advocate for us uh, through the hard work of Senator Schumer. He got uh, this plan into the Ida relief bill and that took the cost of this plan out of the village of Mamaroneck's pocket and put it all on the federal government and uh, saving us anywhere from eight, nine million dollars, which is money that we should be thinking about how to invest to prevent flooding in the future, that we were always prepared to do uh, for our part of the plan. But since then, we have decided to take $150,000 from the uh, relief package that uh, President Biden passed and put that toward engineering studies for flood mitigation. We have enacted an emergency plan to clean out the rivers, which needs to be done and is being done and has been done started already. And you know we will soon be having this plan from the Army Corps in place. Uh, we don't have to go back to square one. If we had to go back to square one, I don't know how many of us would still be around to see a shovel in the ground. Uh, let's, let's remember that in 2007, after that flood, which was the impetus for the current plan, uh, it took us eight or nine years to get a plan through and then approved. And then in the change of administration, when the Trump administration came in, uh, and, and, I, and I know that bothers some people when I say it, but it is what it is. They killed it. And that plant, had it not been killed, would have been started. And I don't know, you know I wouldn't say that it, you know, it would have saved us from Ida, but it would have helped us. And we would have known that there was hope on the horizon. So I know people get anxious, and I know people uh, have trepidation. You know, we, we had a, a storm recently, I don't know, it was an inch and a half you know, of rain. And people were really at wit's end, and I don't blame them. You know, it, it, I, I was worried too, and I don't fly. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I don't lose all my clothing. I don't lose my family portraits. Uh, you know, I, I don't have to get a new furnace or a new boiler uh, or a new washer and dryer that I know some people have had to replace over and over and over and over again. And that just takes a lot out of people. And, but I, I just want to caution that when we meet with the Army Corps, these people are there to help us. They want to help us. They want to do this plan. They, they, they want to plan in this area and they, they, they really think that this plan will help. So let's you know have our questions answered. Let, let's be emphatic. But let's just remember that these are our friends. And that, that, that's where I am on this. Anybody else can add whatever they want to add? I just want to let Everybody know that the Flood Mitigation Committee will be deciding tomorrow night whether they're going to have one or two public meetings prior to the core meeting uh, to help uh, people um, uh, focus on uh, whatever they wish to do with the core meeting, but also focus on other aspects of what to do about flooding 
um, that are not as robust as the core plan. Thank you. And as soon as they, they make that in, let me know and I'll get the word out through everything that I have as quickly as possible. Uh, all right, that's where we are with the Army Corps. What else did we move up? That's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to 1A, the wetlands. Uh, Ms. Mr. Uh, Burt, uh, who's the chairman of HCZMC, uh, smartly said that he's going to review what the planning board has sent to him, and uh, he is going to ask for a 45-day continuance, uh, which I appreciate. But I, I, I just want to point out, I think really in the, that we did this kind of backwards. We should have figured out where we wanted to go with it and then sent it to the land use committees and then have it come back to us because they it might come back with their proposals and that might not fit with us. And then we're gonna send it back to them again. But it is what it is, but that's just my my advice for the future in these situations. But they did get the ball rolling, so okay. Uh, Enforcement of multiple dwelling rules. I think we got to wait to Jerry. Right? Am I right, Dan? Uh, please, yeah. Mm -hmm. What, Dan? Yeah, uh, please. Okay. Just, just I'd like to point out. I want to thank Dan, uh, Sonoff, and Mark uh, tonight for uh, uh, for filling in. Uh, Mr. Uh, Barbario could not make it tonight, and uh, Mr. Spolzino could not make it tonight. So. As they say in the theater, playing the parts of uh, those good actors will be these two gentlemen. I, I just thank you guys. I know, I know it's hard to just jump in like that. Uh, sanitation roof, we're holding off, right? Uh, before we just hold, uh, uh, you, you skipped the multiple dwelling law. Oh, yes. No, I didn't. We just all I just asked Dan if there's any no way we need to hold off. He said we need to hold off. Yeah, for Jerry to get back. For Jerry to be in. Waiting for Jerry again. Yeah. Okay. On the uh, on the transfer roof, uh, again, I asked. Uh, this is the third time for an analysis of the cost. What was originally approved uh, approved by the board to what it's now going to be, and the uh, issue of uh, taking in house and paying with it for overtime. Uh, we're looking for that uh, financial analysis. And also, we, uh, th there's a some discussion in here about adding solar panels. Yes, yeah, so and we hope that would happen. And, and that kind of dovetails a little bit into uh, G, 1G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if you want to talk about both those items or uh, separate, separate. All right, let's talk about both those items. Okay. Um, so uh, 1G uh, really deals with um, you know, reuse of the Taylor's Lane site. So uh, it, it, I spoke with our consultants from Labella who are helping us with the close out. They have some experience with uh, solar development. They, we had a, a meeting with a company that, that works on this. The, the first and, and major step would be doing an interconnection study to determine if the site can be served because it has to be within a certain distance from a, a Con Ed substation. Uh, and that it varies based on the level of uh, energy you're looking to produce. Uh, so that kind of that's where we'd have to start. As far as uh, the, the Taylor's land and reuse, uh, in uh, the Seeker Law, uh, it's actually kind of encouraged to redevelop former brownfield sites uh, as for solar use. It's actually a type two action if it's a former brownfield site under 25 acres which is re being redeveloped for solar. So a site like Taylor's Lane, uh, it seems like it would be um, you know, appropriate for that if that's what the board wanted to do. It seems like there's a public policy imperative at the state level to try and encourage redevelopment of sites like this. And in speaking with the, uh, uh, the developer who, who deals with uh, solar, I asked him to take a look at the, um, the site over at um, uh, the transfer station and uh, some of the other buildings at uh, 313 Fayette. I think they would, you know, if they're gonna 
deploy solar to a transfer station where they'd want to try and maximize what they can do out there with our other buildings because we have the transfer station, we have the garage, and we have the Butler building located at 310 uh, Fayette. So, so we know that there's a substation uh, near the, the, the Fayette Avenue because there's one right up the block. Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's definitely uh, more technologically possible. Um, in speaking with the- yeah, just let me, Hold on, Dan. Do, do, we know, do we know the distance between Taylor's Lane and the next substation? No, and, and that's why we'd have to do an interconnection study. But in speaking with uh, you know, a company that does uh, the develop solar, uh, they thought it was a good site. They thought that it probably was close enough uh, to make an interconnection. Uh, their concerns uh, were basically about uh, zoning and setback requirements, which is, I, I don't know if that's a question that we're that the board is prepared to address tonight. Um, you know, ultimately it's a village owned property. So, you know, uh, we believe we're exempt from the zoning uh, requirements uh, in terms of, you know, how many, how active the site would be. Um, it would be a lot less active once the site is built than say uh, an athletic field or most other uses. Uh, when I said, how many times would someone be out there? Uh, you know, I was told, you know, once it's built, maybe half a dozen times a year, you'd have activity out there. Uh, so uh, it would probably be more passive in its use. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, there are certain questions that need to be answered as it relates to Taylor's Lane, uh, specifically inter the interconnection question before you can move on. Uh, to Trustee, to step. Two. Trustee two, four. Yes, Dan, let me ask this question, which I asked five years ago, or plus. When, when are we going to get the okay to explore uh, what we can do so that we, this kind of questions can be answered more precisely? And what will be given to us? We, we hired engineers since I've been. I think the, new, the only thing new that between uh, I joined the board and asked this question is, about the status of Taylor's Lane, we reviewed the file, and then the questions of solar came. And now was that we have to hire that uh, consultant again to kind of clean the file. My, my question again is when? When is that gonna happen so that we can really put our heads together and say this is going because some would say this is a new thing. No, we've been work, we've been trying oh. to get to this point for more than five plus years. So yeah, when? I mean, it, it's been, um, like pulling teeth with the DEC, you know, we've actually had to enlist the assistance of Assembly of Notice on two separate occasions to have someone from DEC get back in touch with us. Um, most recently, uh, I, I spoke to uh, Lisa Urban from Assembly of Notice's office earlier this year. Uh, she called me back last week, and I'm, I've been trying to include something in the, in the report. Uh, we should have comments back on our draft site management plan very soon. Uh, but the important thing is that there's nothing at this point that prevents us from talking about future reuse. We're literally at the, at the one yard line for uh, uh, getting the site closed out. Right, so, we have a professional. We're we've been pay, we're paying to do this, right? Because well, what, you know, the there's politics involved. Right. But what, what does the professional let us tell us? And can that be then then a, a document that can be worked from? That's uh, that then is news to me. Well, the, the site ma the site management plan is what we hired the consultant to help us with, and that's what we're trying to close out. Um, if we depending on you know, the site management plan just talks about the future reuse of the site uh, in more uh, generic terms. Uh, if there is a decision to be made, we'd have to amend the site management plan. Uh, but I think, as you may recall, at one point, the, uh, the board asked the staff to reach out to our, our the various uh, boards and com committees and commissions to ask them about what, uh, what they wanted to see done with, with the site going forward. Um, not surprisingly, the various boards and commissions 
advocated for uses consistent with their missions. So for instance, the Parks and Recreation Commission, you know, wanted athletic space. I think the uh, Committee for the Environment wanted some sort of passive park or environmental demonstration. Um, you know, one group asked for a dog park at the site. Uh, you know, we talked to the board about it, but uh, I think we were waiting to get the site management plan uh, finalized, which like I said, has been a arduous process with uh, the DEC. Uh, but uh, in terms of, uh, I was asked to look at specifically solar array for the site for municipal power generation. Um, in terms of that, the it does seem that it is something the state would like to see uh, brownfields reused for. Um, it would be a simple amendment the site management plan, if that's the decision the board wants to uh, go through. Uh, but like I said, we're, we've been trying to get this site closed out for years. And it honestly, it's only been through the assistance of our state elected officials that we've even gotten DEC to get back in touch with us on multiple occasions. So in, in terms of time frame, um, you know, I, we, we had the ability to start focusing on what we, how the village wants to reuse the site. Um, you know, this is an option. Um, you know, is that the option the board wants to pursue or would you want to do some sort of visioning study? Or? All right, Lou, go ahead. Okay, um, I wanted to thank Dan. Dan, thanks for this document because the first time we talked about solar was after uh, uh, my first Committee for the Environment meeting where um, we discussed it. And um, the truth is, in, in this instance, I'm grateful that nothing was done with it because this has happened in other places where they've used uh, uh, cat landfills for solar arrays. So I, I really appreciate your work on this. And I, I'm, I'm very excited uh, at, the, at, the, at the prospect. One of the things the Committee for the Environment suggested, though, and what got them very excited is that there is a thing where solar arrays and pollinator sites can be at the same place, and and, and that would be that that's that's something that they were very very enthusiastic about, and I would want to get that on the record right now. Okay, Vic, did you have your hand up? I was just hoping Dan would would or I suggest that he consult talks with the consultants, because I don't know I. From practice, also know that there's polit there may be politics involved, but the consultants sometimes need to solve that little technical glitch with with the with the uh, with the person in the agency, and sometimes they're nothing. They're they're very close, so just reaching out to, for to get to get a response. It could, it's been there must be an answer. So if you could do that, maybe between now and the next meeting, that would be helpful. Well, I mean, it, it, is the question when it's going when the site management plan is going to be approved by DEC? What do they? What is the issue holding it from the from the technical people, and and when do they expect this to happen? And of the, course, you can you can add on uh, a call from for, from Mr. Otis's office, etc. But but uh, the the line is between the two. So and we're. I mean, honestly, the issue was was the state getting back to us with comments. They hadn't they hadn't we had submitted this back last fall, and they hadn't given us any comments. Um, I think I may have. Uh, Give me one second. I'm gonna. Uh, I think I may have an email on this. I'm just gonna look it up real quick. If you uh, give me a little bit of indulgence. Um, so um, the the I spoke with our consultant from Labella at the beginning of the month. Uh, the DEC had uh, reached out to him. Uh, and they committed to responding to our draft site management plan by May 6th with uh, their comments. Um, I was told, or it was implied, that their comments were going to be minimal and they may just approve it as of right uh, with what we submitted. But you know, May 6th is, is the date that we've been given for when they will respond to us. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't. I had my email, just didn't have it committed to memory. Okay. Uh, we are going to do executive session at seven o'clock. That leaves us four minutes. 
So I think the only four minute thing we have here is item 1L, uh, which is filling vacancy for unexpired terms of trustees village update. And if you all turn, you'll see that what this is, it is a letter from uh, the attorney general's office. Uh, I, I guess you would call it the technical legal term would be hunting, hunting the ball for the state board of elections. Uh, so that's where we are now. We, we are uh, waiting for the state board of elections to opine because uh, I, don't, I, I don't know why the attorney general's office couldn't have an opinion, but whatever. So we take that one off until we have more information from the Board of Elections. Let's get that off the agenda. Uh, I need a motion. Oh, let's go to the executive session. Uh, in front of us, the Westchester Joint Waterworks matter uh, should work. Wait for Mr. Scolzino. Uh, I can say this out in public before we do it. Uh, the Westchester Joint Waterworks uh, has uh, accepted the draft environmental impact statement uh, that was prepared by our consultants. We are the lead agency. For those of you who don't remember, we offered to share lead agency with the town of Harrison's planning board. Uh, they declined. Uh, the question then went to the Department of State about who would be the lead agency, and the Department of State sided with the Westchester Joint Waterworks that we would be lead agency. So we have just completed our draft environmental impact statement. We have accepted it. The comment period is open. If you go to the Westchester Joint Waterworks uh, website, uh, you can uh, access that and uh, read all the supporting documentation and put in any comments or uh, that you would like and they will be addressed in the final environmental impact statement and I, I don't remember I think it's sometime in June when uh, the window closes so let's exclude that from the executive session uh, I'll make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss the village manager EEOC complaint against board of trustees. It is anticipated that a motion will be offered to go into executive session 1051D of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss matters of ongoing litigation, litigation labor council to attend. So I make that motion. Second. Orgy call the rule. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Oh, you can get me on here, Tom? Sure. I'll see you at the regular meeting.
Glad you can. <laughs>
Are we uh, You're live and we're recording. Live from New York. Good evening, folks. Uh, welcome to the Village of Marinick Board of Trustees regular session uh, before April 25th, 2022. Before I get started, I need a motion to close the work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Please join me to pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now I need a motion to open the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for April 25th, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, welcome to the Village of Marinette Board of Trustees. Okay, we'll give you the feedback. Uh, for a technical a, problem, or he's going to fix it. I need a motion to close the work session. Uh, second. All in favor? Uh, okay. Okay. Please join me for the pleasure of to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Full roll. Trustee 
Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? You're muted, Nora. Nora? You vote yes, Nora? Can you hear us, Nora? Wave your hand if you can hear us. Nora, can you hear us? Nora, can you hear us? Okay, we can't hear you. I, I, I see that you hear me. She can't hear you. She can't hear me? She wasn't really calling for it. Having a little technical difficulty. Can't hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. Okay. We can't hear you, Nora. She she understands and she's trying to. She I, I'm talking to Nora, Dan. She can't hear you. That's what I'm trying to tell you. No, she said she could hear. She gives a thumbs up. Just stay at it. How come we can't hear you, Nora? You can hear us. Okay. 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 All right. For the time being, we'll let Nora do uh, auto, uh, you know, hand vote. Okay. Let me start again. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Tafor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. No. Okay. Then let's get on to the agenda. First item on the agenda is, and we have a long agenda tonight. We're approving the budget. Uh, the first item on the agenda is communication to the board. I don't see anybody with their hand up. Mr. Lippman, put his hand up. I got it. Open. Mr. Lippman, unmute yourself. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I help you, Mr. Lippman? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment. I happened to listen to part of the um, work session. And I'm glad you were discussing the issue of the dam and all that goes with it. Um, it just struck me that, that you're in kind of an awkward position. Uh, you have kind of a conflict of interest. You're an executive of the waterworks and you are our mayor. So how can you make a contract with yourself? Uh, how do you, you know, you, you, you really need to recuse uh, uh, one way, one way or another, because you can't, you can't make a deal with yourself. It just doesn't make any sense. And I, I furthermore, I, I just don't see the nature of the emergency. It's, you know, it's an ongoing problem, probably since the dam was built. And I'm, I'm glad you approached it in the work session and we'll try to work it out. But I really urge you to keep ethics in mind and okay. do this properly. Thank you, Mr. Levin. Just to give you some history, your friend, uh, Mr. Tickett brought that up one time and it was opined by the village attorney that I did not have a conflict of interest and that was checked out already, but thank you for bringing that up. But let me remind you as a member of the planning board, Anytime you appear before another board, you're supposed to identify yourself as a member of the planning board. Uh, Ms. And Mayor, I'm sorry for interrupting you. I uh, overlooked my, my note. Uh, I wanted to mention publicly okay. that I am a member of the planning board, have been since 2016. I am the president of the Hawthorns Gardens Co-op here okay. in the village, and I'm also a candidate for trustee but I was appearing tonight solely as an individual resident of right. the community. Right. You, you don't get to do that. But I apologize you. for not doing it first. Thank I you. overlooked my note. Awesome. Okay. Well, horse before the car. Thank you for your input. But uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get you the opinion 
uh, that the village attorney had the right based upon uh, your friend, Mr. Tickard's previously have, have brought this up. I, uh, I have not spoken else? with Mr. Teeker, so. Uh, yep. uh, nobody else has their hand up. Let's go right to the public hearing. Public hearing on fiscal year 2023 final budget resolution. Okay. Need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Nora seconded, affirmed with her hand. Uh, Bogey call roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Trustee Tafor? Yes. Murphy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Now, the first item on the agenda uh, is resolution, resolution A. This is Village of Merrick resolution summarizing the tentative 2022-2023 Village Brother budget for finalization as adopted budget. As you can see from the summary, the appropriations of $41,320,290. And that was the, in the tentative, the adjusted is $41,576,803. Less estimated revenue other than real estate taxes. $13,455,388 that is not real estate taxes. That includes a wide variety of these fees, uh, meters, and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, and, and uh, sales tax. An appropriated fund balance of $600,000. Uh, the amount to be raised by the real estate tax levy is $27,000,000. $521,415. I need a motion to approve budget resolution A. So moved. Second. Oh, we got you back. Hey. There you go. Uh, Ogie, call a roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Budget resolution B, resolution adopting a budget for fiscal year commencing June 1st, Excuse 2022 me. and ending. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mayor. I'm sorry to interrupt, but do we, in, if it's a public hearing, is the public allowed? I see a hand up. I, I think he just hasn't put his hand back down. But maybe we can ask. Mr. Lippman, you don't want to speak on a budget, right? Your hand is just up from before. From before. Okay. I'm going to lower your hand. Resol okay, where, where was I? Uh, okay. B. Uh, um, resolution B. Uh, just <coughs> just to, everybody see it in front of you. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Manchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. 2022-2023, uh, village tax levy and warrant setting the tax levy rate. Uh, everybody sees it in front of us. Uh, any questions or concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. Augie, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Library tax levy and warrant. Uh, the library conducts its own vote every year on its taxes that uh, it, it's held in December. The public is uh, allowed to vote on that. Uh, and then what the village does is the village uh, has a line on your taxes that says library tax. We collect that money and then we, we give it to the library. So we are just a pass through. The library doesn't have taxing authority on itself. So or by itself, so they have to go through the village. I, I'm just explaining what that is. Uh, and this year their budget is $2,905,876, which was approved back in December. Questions or concerns? A motion, please. 
So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees, Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Was yes, yes. Aye. Uh, 2023 uh, certificate of arrears due for unpaid amounts receivable on various properties, including such amounts. It should be amounts, it says amounts in the annual tax levy and authorizing the levy of same upon the real property in a village in default. These are people who haven't paid their taxes. Bogey, is that right? Yes. And uh, okay. Uh, the only change I would have is just the typo, including such, it should be A mounts. Okay. Uh, so with that change, I will make the motion. Second. What we say in roll? Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. <clears throat> Westchester Waterworks arrears for water charges on various properties. Uh, what this is, is that when people go delinquent on their water bill, uh, the water company sends it to the village. Uh, the village then collects that money through the property taxes, and it also collects a transfer fee, which accrues to the village's benefit. So obviously, it, it, it's important to pay your water bill on time. Uh, but if you don't, we're going to get you into taxes. And this year, it's 87600 Eighty-three dollars and ninety-nine cents that we need to be collecting. Any motion? So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young. Yes. Sanchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Four. <coughs> yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Adoption of tax warrant. You are hereby commanded to receive and collect from such several persons named in the tax row here too. Annex the sum, the several sums in the tax will for 2021. Uh, hereof, opposite their respective names, bring a total to $3 million, $30,515,170.99. Uh, this is just what we're collecting in the current budget from the library district from unpaid water arrears, for special assessments, and from prior levies unpaid. So it's just, this is just the amalgam of everything that we've just talked about when it comes to. Thirty million five hundred fifteen thousand hundred seventy dollars and ninety nine cents. So, may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, hold on. The red eye, right? Authorization for investments. Right on. You just did tax warrant with G. Now we're on H. We oh, have right, a okay. Okay. Good. I skipped one. Thanks. I was just testing you, Lord. Yeah, very good. Uh, you are hereby commanded to receive. No, no, you know what? My pages are screwed up. Okay. Budget resolution H. Uh, reallocating funds within the appropriations to provide for salary increases for non union employees. And below is the salary schedule, uh, right there in black and white. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? I'll make the motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. <clears throat> uh, budget resolution, Village of Mamaroneck budget authorization for investment. Resolved that the Village of Mamaroneck uh, clerk treasurer and deputy treasurer during a fiscal year beginning June 1st, 2022, are authorized to invest monies not needed for immediate expenditure in accordance with the provision of general municipal law, the local finance law, and village investment policy. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, budget resolution, Village of Mamaroneck charges on various properties <clears throat> to be included in the tax law. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, this is $250 a 
And what is this for? Oh, just clean up three seconds. To clean up as a property, we had to hire uh, oh, just, okay. a company to clean up properties that are abandoned or not taken care of. Okay, great. Or abandoned houses. Okay, good. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, full roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The board? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Uh, item K. Village of Mamanic budget termination of exempt status 5020S resolution authorizing the levy and the collection of additional taxes upon termination of exempt status. That are a couple of exempt statuses, a veterans exempt status. Is there a senior citizen exempt status? Yes. So if, if somebody sells a house to somebody who doesn't fall in that category, we then reassess, the, you know, re put it back to the taxes the way it's right. supposed to be. And that's what this gives you the authority to do. That's exactly. Okay. Uh, I will make that motion. Second. Hold the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Manchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The fourth? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. <clears throat> and, uh, that concludes the passing of the budget. Uh, I'd like to thank staff and the Board of Trustees for all their hard work and the Budget Committee uh, for all their input and the residents who also had input. And uh, I see that my friend Glenn has his hand up. And since he's a stellar member of the Budget Committee, Mr. Tippett, unmute yourself. Yeah, I'd just like to. Uh thank everybody for their hard work. Uh, there were a, a, a lot of uh, uh, difficult decisions to make. And I think the board at the end got together with staff and you really did a yeoman's job of putting together this year's budget. You know, nothing, nothing is perfect, but it, 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 it's the, the best conclusion that you could come to you know, with the information that, that you had, I think you did an excellent job. Uh, just have to be a little bit careful uh, with uh, some of the expenses and some of the income. Uh, you know, a lot of it is a little bit with speculation at the end of COVID, but overall, I, I think uh, staff and um, trustees, everybody had a lot of input and I think you all did an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Close public. <clears throat> I need a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Call roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. There's a little bit of housekeeping here on the next item. Uh, I need a motion to open the public hearing uh, to exceed the tax cap, which we did not do. So moved. Second. Pull the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. This is a pitching duel. You realize that, don't what? you? What? Okay. I'm going to mute Glenn. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, okay. Now we've opened a public hearing. We don't need this law. I propose that we close the public hearing and let it die a natural death. So moved. I'll second. Oh, you call the roll of closing the public hearing. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. As they say, it died on the vine. All right. Uh, all right, let me get to my thing here. Give me one second, folks. Thank you all for your cooperation in getting that done. I think that was the smoothest uh, I've seen it done. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> uh, item 2A, resolution authorizing budget amendment for over budget accounts. Okay. Uh, it's appropriating fund balance 5,500 to utilities electric. Appropriating fund balance 13,000 to utilities elected or electric. Uh, appropriating fund balance $20,000 to utilities telephone. Questions or concerns? Do I have a motion? 
I'll make the motion. So moved. Oh, you made you made the motion? Yeah. No, I'll second it. Will we call a roll, please? Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Right. Thank you. Uh budget amendment for Parks OT. This is taking uh, $7,731.64 from the field maintenance line and appropriating to the parks overtime line. Any questions, concerns? Can we give it a little explanation on that? Did you, Dan, you muted, pal. Okay, you're still muted. Your mute is up, but you're not telling me to answer. Augie's going to answer. Augie's going to handle this one. Yeah, we get extra fees for the main of the field from the different leagues. Those extra fees that weren't anticipated for were appropriating the revenues in accordance with the amounts received and adjusting the expenditures respectively. Yeah, so the question is, what's the overtime for? Maintenance of the fields. Okay. Is there a motion and a second? No. I'll make the motion. Second. Hold the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yep. Uh, resolution authorization to exec execute budget transfers to cover overfund accounts. Uh, recreation Department? From supply four hundred eight dollars from supplies to office equipment, uh, storm item recovery, uh, five thousand for meals to cover overtime. Contingent uh, funding for overtime as a result of St. Patrick's Day parade four thousand three hundred and twenty one dollars going to the celebrations overtime line. Schlunch. Uh Any questions or concerns? What was that? You gave a number that it's different from what I have. Four thousand. Four thousand two hundred thirty-one seventy-two. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Uh, I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Bold Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Thank you. Uh, the abstract of the audited vouchers is the next item on the agenda. Two D. It is $913,296.58. Questions or concerns? I have a question on page th three through six. There is a refunds of open permits. Is, is that because they've been closed out and this is a refund for what was not expended or something else? Well, these, these are the refunds of the deposit that are left for the street opening permits. These are deposit. Yeah, they're all five. That's the deposit for the street opening permit is five hundred dollars. So once the work is done, uh, we uh, uh, we pay the five hundred. We return the five hundred dollars. I'm guessing is just between everything we've had to account for these last uh, six months. This is just a batch process of many many street opening permits. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, concerns? Okay, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustee Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. He said yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Hey, well. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda, there's no old business, new business uh, for A. Resolution authorizing execution of contract for completion of comprehensive plan. This is Can I ask a question? Where's the contract? It's not on the agenda. Backup. It was included. I see a resolution, but I don't see any contracts. So it was included. We... It was included with the work session uh, on the from the eleventh. See, we don't approve things on the work session. We move them to regular session. 
and, and this was moved to regular session. This is the, but the, the contract was presented to the board at the meeting on the 11th. It was the proposal. So we execute the proposal. Where, where is it? it? It was on the work session on April 11th when the board reviewed it. Did we, did we change this? Because the, I'm working off an agenda that I downloaded um, over the weekend and I have the wrong price. Did you put, did you change the resolution to be 22,000? Um, I, I did not, but the, we're not asking, uh, uh, we're not asking for the entire amount. There is money left in the Board of Trustees contractual services line. So I believe the 20,000 gets us to the, uh, the 22,000. Right, but the, but the, we didn't approve a $38,000 contract. No, uh, that's, we, haven't, we haven't approved anything yet, but we didn't. You're right, it's, I believe it's 22,000. So it's you, five, you know, yeah, you know, we, we, we can work and choose to amend the resolution that we're as clause and uh, you know, it'll be properly reflected in the minutes. What's the total of the contract and where, where is it exactly? So we know what we're voting on. Uh, let me look up the April 11th, uh, 2022 work session agenda. The schedule and the price, that's all we need. Share my screen in just a moment. Twenty-two thousand five hundred. Uh, here's the uh, worksheet: the number of hours to complete each task. Uh, what we don't have is a timeline. Do yeah. The timeline is a three to four months. That was part of the proposal as well. Okay. The, up, up, it's three to four months and up to five months to adoption. So what what number should be in there? Uh, it should well the the number is correct. It's the number that's in the middle of the resolution. It's twenty two thousand five hundred, not uh, thirty eight thousand seven hundred. Twenty two thousand five hundred. Yeah, the, the assistant village manager had a problem when he prepared the resolution last week. Okay, we get a lot right. You're you're allowed to up every once in a while. But the the twenty the twenty thousand is enough. Uh, to fund this expense, given what's or, what already exists in the Board of Trustees line. Gotcha. <clears throat> Is that okay, everybody? Good. So uh, here's the question. I mean, if so, did we need twenty? If the if the project was only twenty two five, did we need twenty thousand, or was it, it we did need twenty thousand? I I believe we did need twenty thousand. I I don't have access to KVS right now, so I, I don't know what the available balance is. Let's assume we do, and uh, if we don't, we could always put it back. Yeah, and it'll fall to fund balance, uh, yeah. unless the board goes crazy with their uh, the dinners for uh, we pay for for uh, attending board meetings in the next six weeks. I don't think so. Awesome. Okay. okay. Yeah, my comment is it's, it would be up to the 22, the resolution, and, and and stressing that that the that the timeline is not to exceed uh I, I I had suggested four months I remember this was ready to go um, so it's 
it says yeah. because we're not even approving a contract we're approving a resolution without a contract yeah uh, so what are we what are we really doing but are what the resolution does is, is it allows the village manager to sign a contract we don't sign contracts no, but we do get get presented at, as long well at least for the last many years we've been presented with a with a proposal with an actual, well, with we, an we actual were. letter we contract or something of the sort because but Victor, we were on April 11. No, no, this is a proposal. I see it here and I commented before. Then it was brought down a bit, but but this is just a this is just a, a draft. Memorandum. This is not a contract. This is a draft memorandum. Okay, so, how about this? Up, up to 23,500, a proposed fee of up to, not to exceed 23,500, and delivery of product within four months. Completion of, of, completion of work within four months. Okay. Uh, I, I actually think the right, the right work were way to do this is is to is to is to authorize him to move forward but to present to pre, to, pre, to to bring us back to bring us back what what is exact what what exactly will be agreed on if so we, we can approve that with with the with the requirement that he brings this back so that so that in you know you don't get extend, extend this for another year or so that, that's really my concern Okay, but it, it shouldn't just, be that way. It shouldn't, uh, I have the come, same concern, but, but that should, is also dependent upon how the Board of Trustees brings things to finality. You know, sometimes we met the enemy and he is us. So uh, that, just, that, 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 that's why this should be this should be put in a way that is just having them do the work, bring it to us and finish it off because it's six years and a comprehensive plan update, which is Really, I agree with you. Yeah, so, but it, it, it's symptomatic. Uh, so let's put let's put it in a resolution, not to exceed twenty three thousand five hundred, and work to be completed. We'll put in it twenty three, twenty three, twenty three five hundred, and work to be completed within four months' time of the adoption of the resolution. Twenty two five hundred. Is it a twenty-three five hundred? It says twenty-two. 500. The 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 exhibit says twenty-two five hundred. Twenty-two five hundred. Up to twenty-two five hundred within four Dan months. Sonoff, is that right? Twenty-two five hundred. Yep, yeah, I have it. Twenty-two thousand five hundred. Up to twenty-two thousand five hundred. My mistake. And work should be completed within four months' time of the adoption of this resolution. Right. All right, thank you all. The work for you? Okay. Yes. I'll make that motion with the with the uh, amendments that I just stipulated. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Second. Second. We have a second. Please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The Park? Yes. Mayor hey, Murphy? Aye. Item 4B. Resolution supporting legislation to amend general municipal law, civil service law, retirement, social security law, public health law in relation to emergency service workers. This is something that uh, uh, Shelley Mayer and uh, State of Senator Shelley Mayer and Steve Otis are working on uh, to allow EMS workers uh, to be treated more fairly in the uh, pantheon of, uh, of uh, providers of emergency services. Uh, many of these folks work part-time in many municipalities uh, and they go from shift to shift to shift. Uh, you know, they don't get enough work in one municipality to uh, feed their families. And this, this would uh, help with that and to put them on a par uh, with their importance. And if you've ever had to call an ambulance and I hope none of you ever have to, you know how important they are when they arrive on the scene and uh, start saving your life. Uh, so I will make a motion to uh, send this resolution supporting our two elected officials in their quest uh, to make life more fair for emergency medical service workers. Second. Augustino Cole roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. 
Murphy. Aye. <clears throat> Uh, item 4C, resolution referring wireless edge recertification to special use permit to the planning board. Uh, it's just allowing us to go to the planning board for the planning board to do their uh, uh, work. This is at the salt shed in the village of Mimarek. Uh Provides uh, cell service to a large area of the village and uh, is, is, is in a spot that is... Uh, less intrusive than, than some other spots. Salt Shed, for those who don't know, is off Fenimore Avenue, uh, Fenimore Road. When you're going toward the uh, 95, it's on the left. Trustee Natchez, you have your hand up? Yes, I do. At the last work session where this was introduced, I asked two questions. What was the dollar amount that we get for the on an annual basis? Uh, and do we have insurance? Are we doing it? Uh, uh, we is the village name is an additional name insured. I was told we would have that uh, for this meeting. Uh, we are an additional insured. Uh, as far as the revenue, um, I, I I don't have access to KVS. I don't can't get the answer right now. But I think between the two cell sites, Augie, don't we get about ninety thousand dollars a year, give or take? Well, they can't tell you that. Uh, but I, I think it's somewhere around 40. If we're getting 90,000 from the two sites, I believe. I, that, think, I think it's 50 down the hall. So maybe it's 40 over there. Yeah. So it's, I think we're getting 40,000 a year for that site, Dan. I'm pretty sure the hall is 50. And, you know, it's also predicated on the revenue they're earning. And they're looking to add an additional uh, carrier. So that would increased our revenue as well and this this is for the <clears throat> this is for the one on on fenimore or the, as well where's the other one uh, this this is just for the one on fenimore uh wireless yeah. edge manages the fenimore site a company called american tower manages the harbor island site that's a separate company yes it is yes. okay Need a motion. A move. So, uh, are you saying that we get forty thousand dollars a year for this for this one on Fenimore? I, I believe that's the case. I, I I believe between the two sites we're getting ninety thousand, and the mayor's recollection is that we're getting fifty for the harbor site, so that would leave forty thousand from this site. But I can, I, I will definitely confirm that tomorrow morning. Please do. Thank you. Need a second. Second. Call the roll, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up is 4D, resolution authorizing the Fireman's Carnival dates and street closures for a parade. Uh, the Fireman's Carnival is going to be from geez, uh, June 24th to July 5th. The boys are going to town this year. Uh, so they're going to need Harbor Island Park from June 17th to July 6th, including lights on lands of field, understanding that the day camp, if held, and it will be held, will be operating in the park in areas that will not conflict with the carnival. Uh, when is the parade? Does it say 20, you want the parade? 30th, I think. 29th or 30th. 29th. Is it in the resolution? Yep. The end. Ah, okay. Thank you. All right. The Fireman's Carnival is uh, a fundraiser for the fire department uh, that's split between the five firehouses that they use for scholarships, for uh, parties, uh, and for various uh, other operations that are not funded by the Village of America. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun time. Uh, I know I've enjoyed it since 1979. My children have enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to bringing my grandchildren. Uh, any questions or concerns? I need a motion. So move. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resolution authorizing 
funding request for Fenimore Prospect Avenue intersection improvements. We've talked about this. We've had uh, many, many, many residents uh, come to us uh, complaining about how really dangerous it is to cross Prospect and Fenimore. Uh, I can attest to it having lived there for most of my time in the village of Mamaronic. It's especially dangerous if you're pushing a uh, stroller or carrying a kid. Uh, Mr. Barbario has decided to do most of the work in-house. Uh, he's contracted out for some of it. Uh, it's a work product of value of under $35,000. Uh, we need a source of funding. 62,000 should be sufficient. Uh, resolve, therefore, that the Board of Trustees authorizes the Clerk Treasurer to create a capital budget account for Fenimore Prospect Avenue improvement intersection with a budget of $62,000. Any questions or concerns? This, this is really this is really good because he's using those bulb outs. He's using those bulb outs. Which it really takes, slows traffic down. It's, it, it, it's, it's a remarkable psychological thing with drivers. It's a traffic calming measure. and. They're going to put plantings in to make it very attractive. Uh, this was supposed to be done in the fall, but we have this little thing called Ida, and uh, so that pushed it back. Uh, so they're, they're going to get it done now. They go to pollinators too, right? They're going to, I, yeah, <laughs> pollinators. All right, I'll make. I'll happily make this motion. Uh, in in in, in, uh, in full disclosure, I have family members who travel. Uh, this route constantly. So uh, I'll just close that that's happening. All right. uh, I'll make the motion. Nora second. second. Nora second. Thank you, Nora. Please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Support? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Next is a resolution authorizing the serving of alcohol at the Mamaronic Avenue School PTA Parent Night event. Uh, I know what was happening here. The, the Maranek Avenue School wanted to have a PTA event, uh, and previously they had had it at uh, restaurants, and that precluded a lot of their parents from going because they really couldn't afford uh, a night out at a restaurant for mom and dad. Uh, that wasn't in their budget. So the Mamaric Avenue Parent PTA in, in, uh, in uh, just a show of good sense decided to keep the price way, way down. And they're gonna do something that everybody can attend down at our harbor. And uh, I think it would behoove us to uh, allow this, uh, they're just gonna have a you know, little beer and a little wine. Uh, it's just so folks know uh, to to, to consume alcohol in Harbor Island Park, uh, the only way you could do it is if the Board of Trustees votes to allow it. Uh, I will happily, although I abstain uh, from alcohol, I will happily make the motion uh, that we allow uh, a little bit of beer and wine for our friends at the Mamaroneck Avenue School PTA. I do not abstain and I second. Full roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resol resolution authorizing purchase of village street sweeper. And this is uh, $300,000 to replace the current uh, piece of equipment. Street sweeping is you know, $303,140. Street sweeping is very important to our community. Uh, we keep the streets clean, uh, our waterways stay clean, because if, if you didn't know uh, how we get rid of our storm water is we dump it right into our rivers. And that's the way it's been since time immemorial. If we were redesigning this place, uh, we wouldn't do it that way, but that's how it's been done. Uh, if, you, if you live in like New York City, it's a combined sewer system where uh, the sanitary and the stormwater all gets treated at the same spot. But we don't have that kind of money here. Uh, so that being said, I need a motion to authorize the purchase of a new street sweeper. Second. Yes. 
So moved. Second. Thank you, Nora. Thank you, Lou. Call roll, please. Trustee Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, for H, resolution authorizing purchase of steel and glass door at the police department. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns about this? This is to you know make sure the police department uh, has the maximum safety and security in its facilities. Uh, that building needs a lot, a lot of work. Uh, you know, oftentimes people come into the police department, uh, they are extremely agitated, and uh, we want to make sure that there's a, a, a line of protection between our officers and uh, folks who might be overwrought about and something. And I appreciate that they got a nice grant for this. Yes. They've been, they've been actually very good at uh, grants. They, they got a grant to do the uh, body cameras, mm -hmm. which I hope we are up and running with soon. Any a motion, please? So moved. Oh. Second. Augustino? Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The fourth? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution adopting of an employee handbook. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns? I think every, uh, every employer now has an employee handbook as part of a uh, modern employment. Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. Second. Roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorizing use of American Rescue Plan Act funds. Whereas the village of Amarok is a recipient of $1,962,147.95 in the American Rescue Plan, off of funds, 50% of which was received in June 2021. And whereas the Board of Trustees has reviewed, re reviewed programmatic guidance and rules based upon the review of several work sessions meeting and at their March 14th, 2022 work sessions meeting adopted by resolution that the first round of ARPA funds be used as follows. Flood mitigation engineering study of area east of Fenimore Road and west of Mamaroneck Avenue, south of Interstate 95 and north of the MTA rail line in some and substance Washingtonville, uh, $150,000 an affordable housing program, $400,000. Sewer rehabilitation, which is ongoing, of uh, $350,000. And the river gauges that we spoke of here, the $50,000. Okay, I will make a motion and we adopt that Mayor, resolution. Wait. Discussion, Mayor. Mayor, I do have an addition here. I just wanna make sure that everything, uh, I think there's mention of following all the regulatory, uh, I mean, the of the requirements from, from the federal government, but let's also include state and local. Let's make sure that we're not just authorizing that things be done without getting the, the uh, necessary permits and approval. So I wanted to include a line on that. What do you want it? Just tell me what you want it. I'm trying to open the, give me one second. What item is this, H? Uh, uh, J. J. How about this? Now, therefore, be it resolved that the village manager is requested to undertake the action necessary to effectuate the impl implementation of these projects, including preparation of RFPs, compliance reporting to the United States Treasury, and I, you should probably stick it in there after that. Yeah. What do you yeah, want to say? I, I, say I, and, and all and all and all the required state and local permits. Receiving all required state and local permits. Okay. As required. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Including uh, Trustee Tafour's amendment, I'll make the motion. Uh, one more question. I, can I wait? Could I just? I thought we were going to go on the to, to, to also to the other side of Fenimore. No. 
to the we're not including the industrial area no well huh? my recollection also what there was some discussion about whether or not this would also be uh the that would involve any examination of um, the florence park area uh, that came up at the uh, flood mitigation advisory committee uh, uh, that uh, uh, trustee uh, Natchez will recall, and I'm, uh, and it was so I don't know uh, I don't know if this has changed or not or if that is still uh, happening some, somewhere else. This is my recollection of what we approved that night. Yeah. This was I, I I copy I basically copied this from the minutes from the March 11th uh, work session when uh, these decisions were were made. Okay, um, uh, subsequent to that, Dan, do you recall that, that the FMAC had asked about the uh, Florence Park as well? And and, and you said that $150,000 is a go-right farm, but you wanted to, that you would bring it, I don't know, that we would think about it? The, F the flood, the FMAC wishes a study to be done on Florence, uh, what I'll call the expanded Florence Park area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that needs to be done. That was not included in this 150,000. Okay, all right. I, I, <clears throat> okay. And, and that, that needs to be done, but we haven't, you know, got a budget for it. Yeah. Okay. Just as a reminder, we're getting another payment. Um, okay. I've made a motion with Victor's amendments. Is there a second? A second. Sorry. Please call the roll. Trustee Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. This? Yes. Support? I said yes, I'm sorry, I muted. Uh, yes, and I'd like to thank uh, President Biden <laughs> for uh, passing this and uh, over strenuous objection from some folks. And uh, this is money that the village of Marek would not have been receiving and that we are gonna put to good use to make our community a better place. Give credit where it's due. Okay, item 4K, resolution authorizing purchase of bailout system and turnout gear for our friends at the fire department. We are taking $112,600 out of appropriate fund balance and we are putting it toward fire department equipment. I just wanna point out that in the budget, uh, there were, I think, round about figure $400,000 that was gonna be capitalized. Uh, we took that $400,000 and put most of it back in the operating budget because they were, they were, you know, it, it was viewed that these are things that should be uh, in the operating budget. And this was the only uh, item that we didn't put back in the operating budget uh, because you know, we have an ample uh, surplus and the surplus, uh, one of the things that can be used for and should be used for is uh, for public safety. And uh, what better way to spend it than on the men and women who uh, keep us safe uh, so that they have, if they have to bail out, which means they actually have to jump out of a burning building, uh, they can do it and live to see another day. And turnout gear, what turnout gear is, it's that's the, the whole garb that the fireman wears when he goes into the building, that big coat and hat, and, you know, the, the, the gloves and the other equipment, which is very expensive and very fire uh, resistant uh, and wears out after 20 years. For 10 years, there's a 10 year shelf life. Okay, so that's what this is. I will make the motion. Second. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Before? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Yes, and thank you to uh, men and women in the fire department. May they never have to use it. So then we're uh, trying out the we're working out with a new truck. Uh, That's right. Around today. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they like that. Uh, <laughs> resolution scheduling public hearing on PLLC. This is uh, the moratorium on residential development in the C1 and C2 zoning districts. This is this, this does not affect anything but residential development in the C1 and C2 zoning districts. And what this would be doing is scheduling a date uh, for considering having a public hearing. So 
uh, resolution uh, scheduling of a public hearing. Public hearing and so it would, we could schedule a date in the future, but I, 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 I would hope that we would move on this, you know, expeditiously and not just let it languish. Because, it, you know, what I want to do, very narrow study on the C1 and C2 district in the flood zone, because that is where the majority of the new development is going to happen. It's the only place where it can happen. Uh, to put a moratorium on the whole flood zone will mean that people uh, in homes could not take out building permits. They could not do uh, extensions to their home. And that is not the problem. The problem is these big apartment houses uh, that can get built, that can still get built in the flood zone. And we, you know, we'd, we'd be putting people in harm's way knowingly. And that to me is uh, a serious situation. So we do have a question. There's no bad law as a backup, backup, and the resolution is is not. I mean, I don't think you have a full backup here. The, the, I, as the, I, I don't oppose it, or things in principle, but in order for me to support this, it has to be really narrow, it's really specific, really clear, and that's precisely what I don't see happening. Precisely, and that a good example is that we, if you look at the backup here, there's no law. It, it was no, there, there, there is was a law. It was in the backup. It, it was in the backup of the uh, work session. Well, the, there no, was no, there, no, there was no there was no law in the work session, and this says we're holding the public hearing tonight. We okay. in the work okay. session. Right. Wait, wait. The work session. We had a proposal from the consultant, but we didn't get to that. Right, so but that, that that's different than we can set a moratorium without a proposal from the consultant. Well, yeah, but I had just, said I wouldn't. Just, I mean, I'm not. Let me, let me did finish. that once yes. and it took two years. I'm not going to do that again. I said no, that. No, Nora, this is a very narrow proposal. That took two years because people kept expanding the scope. This is very narrow. So In any case, there's no oh, law. How let can me you... finish. Let me finish. Okay. Let's get the law as the backup. We'll come back to this in two weeks. We'll put a proper date on it and we'll get everything and, in order. And we'll have to go to work session. And the scope. Work session. And the scope of the proposal. We had that. We didn't no, get wait, to wait, that. Wait, 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 excuse me. The scope of the proposal is different than scheduling a public hearing. Oh, um, you, but you I, need to know what you're going to do before. And, no, and with, with that, you can write a law. This, okay. I, I understand that. Put, put I, things in order and see if this okay. gets so in the right get track. We'll hold this over for two weeks. Thank you. We'll come back to this in two weeks. But this is where things are. Uh, resolution supplementing appropriation to fund emergency capital repair of sidewalk in front of Florence Park. Okay, this is 12,600 from the appropriated fund balance uh, to transfer capital fund from, to the capital funds. Do you want to talk about this a little, uh, Dan? Uh, sure. Uh, there's a uh, failure in the sidewalk in front of Florence Avenue Park. Uh, we want to take care of it uh, quickly. Uh, there's no uh, funding for this item. We uh, solicited three quotes. We only received one, one response uh, from uh, Joe Cellelli. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's under $35,000, so it could be awarded by the manager but we need a, for, a source of funding so we can actually uh, pay the contractor to do the work. It, when you say sidewalk in front of Florence Park, where in front of Florence Park? Uh, on the Florence side of Florence, but yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's, it's in front of the, by the, by the fence in front of, uh, the chain link fence in front of Florence Park. It's near, it's it, it looks near the on four sides. So no, it, but it's, it's on the, Chain link fence on the Florence Avenue side of the park. Okay, that, that's what I, I just wanted to make sure we were talking about the right sidewalk. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Uh, I see somebody has a hand up. Ms. Roney has a hand up. You got that on? Yep. Ms. Roney? Yes, I actually wanted to speak on the um, resolution that you had forward on the C1 and C2 district moratorium. Okay, go ahead. You do it. I'm not sure if you're aware, 
But I think since you're rescheduling this and moving it forward, I think you need to look at the transit oriented development overlay zone, which is within the C1 or two C2 district. Because if you aim to deal with residential, uh, there's a provision in there that allows for residential in the transit oriented development zone. Yes, that, that, that's exactly what we're looking at. Yeah, I know, but you're only limiting it to the C1 and C2 district, not also the transit oriented development overlay zone. But it, we, we'll handle it in the course of it. All right, I, I, that's what I wanted to tell you before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Have a good evening. Uh, Okie dokie. Where the heck were we? Sidewalk replacement. Uh, questions and concerns all taken care of? All right, motion? Move approval. Second. Call the roll, please. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Resolution authorizing waivers of fees for property maintenance cleanup. Uh, yes. Yes. Dan, you want to speak about this quickly? Sure. We, we have a couple of properties that uh, several years ago under prior owners uh, fell into a state of, uh, uh, they were unkempt, so we had to do what we need to do to go onto the properties and maintain them. In the time frame between when we, uh, when the charges accrued, and when we can put them as a lien on the tax bill, the property ownership changed, and you know, the we can't once the the uh, charges are liened, uh, you cannot uh, waive them. So if there's a desire to waive the fee as a matter of fairness for the new owners, this is the opportunity. Before, uh, so we don't have to put out the lien. So basically, it's new. It's new owners. These are not the people who got the violations or who didn't Correct. take care of the property. Yeah. You know, had this been done prior to the right. had this been lean prior to the sale, it would have been taken care of during the right you know, the escrow process. But but and the work was done way prior to the sale. Correct. Correct. So why was that not immediately leaned? Because you have to wait a, a statutory amount of time before you can lean it. I think it's what I have to give it to the end one year. One year so in that one year time frame, from when the charges accrued to when we had the opportunity to lean it, the ownership changed. Thank you, Dan. So just as a matter of curious, what could be done in the future to prevent that from, from something like this happening again? I mean, there's not much. I mean, it's, you know, we, the, the legal mechanism to get the money is to lean the property, but we can't lean it until that year has passed. So. I, I don't know how we could uh, how we could enforce that. I could certainly talk to the attorney to see if there's anything creative we could do. But you know, it's a it's a statutory thing for when unpaid uh, unpaid fees uh, get leaned. I just seen the same thing with the water water reviewers. You have to wait a long time for that to happen. Okay, uh, I understand. I, I what I was thinking of is there a way of notice and ha and having it filed somewhere so that when a property search is done that they will find out that there's a you know an outstanding obligation I, I can talk to the attorney I, I'm not familiar with that you know the law in that area okay okay thank I you think that, I think we should look into that for the future thank you okay uh, I need a motion to add an item to the agenda this is the item that uh, Mr. Sonoff brought to our attention today. Can we, can we vote? No, we vote don't we have to vote on this? Waivers. The waivers, we have to vote on it. Yeah, we have to vote on this. Well, I'm, I'm adding a motion, an item to the agenda. We still have to vote on that. Oh, sorry, the waivers. Uh, my, my apologies, yeah. my apologies. Okay. Uh, in, in case of remembering this, I forgot to vote. Uh, call the roll, please. Is there an item? Item first. So first, move. Second. Move. Nora Lucas. Or Trustees Young? Yes. Nantes? Yes. Lucas? Yes. 
the floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Hi. Thank you. And I, I jumped the gun a little bit because I didn't want to forget this. And I knew I, I wrote something ad item on the thing there. Uh, so this is what uh, Mr. Sonoff sent to us this afternoon about the community choice aggregation that had to be uh, that had to be decided right away because they have a very short window. Uh, any questions or concerns? So we should just explain it. Can you just explain it? And can you give us a quick explain quick explanation? Yep, uh, the village is part of the community choice aggregation program. They're looking to extend the current agreement for six months to the end of this year. Uh, they were looking to negotiate a new price for the energy. Uh, originally, agreement was supposed to, uh, the original agreement capped it at 12.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, their due diligence is finding that that's not going to be a reasonable price. So they're asking to have it increased to 13.9 cents per kilowatt hour for the uh, uh, what can be considered a uh, a, a good uh, response to their RFP. That's kind of the, the quick, quick version. So it's uh, the, the price the price of electricity is going up and uh, people can opt out if they want. Yeah. That's correct. You might pay a little more to save the environment. So yeah, come on. Think of your grandchildren before you make a rash decision. Uh, I need a motion to add this to the agenda. Have we done that? So moved. Second. All in favor of adding it to the agenda? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Now I need a motion to adopt this. So moved. Second. Uh, Doreen's hand is up. Let me just see what she wants here. Ms. Roney, uh, unmute yourself. Doreen, you want to say something? Can you hear me? Yes. I unmuted myself because I'm waiting for uh, communications to the board too. So I'll wait until then. All right, thanks. Just sit tight, you're almost there. Uh, Paul Roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Ms. Roney, it's communications to the board round two. You're up. Um, you just muted yourself. Muted. Now you're unmuted. Okay, stay like that. Well, my 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 dashboard is telling me differently. Um, I could appreciate all the hard work everybody's doing, and I um, applaud you on uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the dam. Hopefully, you'll figure out who owns it, so on and so forth. But um, the state of our rivers have been in bad shape for a very, very long time. And I'm pretty sure when you did the budget tonight, uh, you weren't concerned about the language in there, but you were concerned about numbers. Um, I know monies are going towards a fund to clean the rivers and all that kind of thing. But what I find very interesting in is, is there is one village department that is charged with cleanup of the dam and our rivers and that's the highway department so i'd like to know um what the schedule is what the regular basis is within their work duties so that we can move forward and have you know clean outflows to the dam and uh clean rig of rivers on a regular basis and that all comes to another portion in littering because there's a whole bunch of litter all over the village. And uh, I don't know how you want to enforce that one, but that's been a problem for a long, long time. So I, I really would like to find out if uh, there could be regularly scheduled maintenance by the highway department, which is in our budget as they are tasked to clean the dam and the river and uh, hope to hear back on that. Thank you. All right, anybody else? All right. Uh, report from the village manager, Dan, you got anything? Yeah, uh, Jerry asked me to report on several items. Uh, I'm gonna take one item out of order because Doreen just brought it up. Uh, forced labor river cleaning. Uh, ahead of the dredging project, uh, uh, we have completed our first work, first week of uh, using village forces to clean in the river. 
Uh, we started on Rockland and Fayette uh, in the Sheldrake and working backwards down the river. Uh, we will continue to clean sections as the weather permits and throughout the summer. Um, on, on the dam, we met with GHD engineers and have scheduled a meeting this week to discuss the violations with the DEC. We have an inspection and maintenance plan. We'll be submitting an EAP plan and providing uh, annual certification within the next few months. Um, the order on consent, the $5.5 million village sewer remediation project phase one is 75% complete. Uh, phase two will begin after the final review is complete by the county DOH and the village. Uh, the cost is approximately $3 million. Uh, roadway and parking lot paving uh, will restart again this week in the village. Uh, Palmer Avenue, Library Lane, and Harbor Island Park are next. Uh, Mamaroneck Avenue will be pay paid by the county uh, midsummer, we believe uh, beginning August 1. Uh, additional paving will be scheduled for the fall. Uh, we just spoke about Prospect in Fenimore, uh, and we're looking to begin that uh, soon. Uh, the contractor for that is the same contractor who's doing the sidewalk work on Waverly and East Prospect Avenue. Uh, during the work session, I reported about the May 18th Army Corps meeting. We have several staff members who are working on uh, arranging that. Uh, we're also working with LMC and hopefully being able to simulcast the uh, meeting in Spanish. Uh, 169 Mount Pleasant Avenue, the exterior work is proceeding. Uh, and uh, as scheduled, we have engaged an architect to redesign the interior and help us deal with the moisture control issues. Uh, last, uh, Jerry wanted to report that we have assembled an internal neighborhood task force uh, led by the manager to go out to various community sections and I uh, use the word interfere with some of the misuse of properties. Uh, for example, commercial use of property in a residential section or overcrowding or excessive trash inside and rear yards will be addressed. Uh, additionally, we'll be looking at industrial and commercial properties along the rivers that have stockpiled debris. Uh, and that concludes the report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk Treasurer? Yes, Mayor. I want to notify everybody that the building license renewals have been sent to the license holders. They are due by May 1st, 2022. Also, the village has received a written notice of defect in Harbor Island Park. Thank you. And just on, on, on the, the dog license renewal, folks, dogs are not allowed in any park except Harbor Island Park and they have to be on a leash. You know, I, I don't know how much more clear we can be. Uh, we, are, we are endeavoring to put in a dog park in Harbor Island Park, uh, but that, you know, it's gonna be a, you know, a bit of a while, but that doesn't mean you get to run your dog uh, off leash, okay? So please keep your dog on a leash. Uh, report from the village attorney. Nothing on my end, Your Honor. Dan, you have your hand up? Yeah, back to the village manager's report. Uh, Dan, uh, we asked uh, a couple of weeks ago and a couple of weeks before that for the uh, paving schedule and the roads uh, that will be done. So we still are looking for that. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, minutes, commission, boards, committees, minutes of the board of trustee budget meeting of April 6th, the work session and regular meeting of April 11th, 2022. Minutes of the Art Council of March 7, 2022. Minutes of the Board of Architecture Review of March 17, 2022. Minutes, <coughs> minutes of the Planning Board Meeting of March 23, 2022. Minutes of the Recreation and Parks Committee Meeting of March 2, 2022. Okay, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. All second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Good night. Night.